house and told the parents, yeah, I think it might be best to sit out this year. The recovery process was quicker than they expected, so he actually got to play towards the end of that season. Did well against St. Louis in the Open Division Championship game last year. In fact, caught a touchdown. His only receiving score of the year. Well, it's been a, a big comeback for this guy, and he's been pretty good so far. He had a big week last week. Nine for 130, three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Kuku always has a good stable of backs. West Salo Mayava trying to dart through that hole and going to spot this ball or end up. It's near the first down stick after Maris Liufau makes the tackle. It's right at the line of the game. I think they're going to measure this one. Yeah, good block down by yep. Bryce Beatty right there. Good, good pull by the full back in the hole. Keep mashing it. Keep grinding it right there. Well, the eye test, and he said, oh, good enough for a first down. The first first down of the game here for Kahuku. Comes in their second drive on the night, halfway through the period. So out to the air. Deep ball downfield, Duke Heffernan. He caught it! A lot of contact out there. Heffernan brought that one in. Kainalu Poo Robinson makes a stop on the tackle to the 20. Five yard line. Gain of 38. Saval with a good fake. Nice ball. Spinning the ball really well. Kind of hangs up there. Good job by Duke Heffernan making the play right there. Well, people, people at home are going to be like, hey, wasn't that pass interference? And, it's official's discretion, obviously, and who initiates the contact first. I'll let you at home uh, decide that for yourself. <laughs> Came on the ground, so I had to pick it up, and he was tripped up in the backfield. What a great play from Alakai Gilman. Offers from Arizona State and the University of Hawaii. Able to get the TFL. Yeah, he handles that bad right here. Picks it up. Gets what he can, you know, get what you can. Get down, get back in the huddle, and let's do it again. And the flag was down. It came uh, near the line of scrimmage. Decline. I'm going to call it on here, trying to determine what he wants to accept this or uh, decline it. It's either going to be second down in about 14. Or depending on this penalty, and this one's going back 15. It definitely hurts, you know, yeah. as a play caller, as a coach, you know, first and 20. Whew. Hard to dial up some plays like that. Such a attack and a hold. So we'll move it back. So Val attacks middle, wide open there is Lokana Enos, hit from Maris Liufau from behind. Lokana Enos, whose father, Kahal Enos, is the JV basketball coach on this campus. Lokana actually was at Punahou his freshman season. Now this junior at 210 pounds went for Big Red. That's got to give some kind of confidence here for Robbie Salvell, young quarterback, Definitely. right? Definitely. He, he hits Enos right all over the ball, OTB, right over the ball. So they essentially get the penalty yards back. Brings up second and 11. Pressure here, missed by Liu Fowl. Salvell is off and running. Stood up. Good stop on the tackle to make it third down and about five by Kainalu Pu'u Robinson. Good pressure up the middle by Maris LaFowle. He forces, he forces Saval out of the huddle. Look at that. The catcher shot wide open out of a cannon he came. He scrambles. The only thing right here is you want him to get down. You know, you don't want to take him to hits. Right now, we don't have no backup quarterback at Kuku, so you just want him to get on the ground, <laughs> get to the next play. <laughs> third down and about a half dozen. From the 23, Mayaba. Maris Liu Fowl. This kid, look out for him, 808. Washington State, University of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas, Arizona, Boise State, San Diego State, Oregon, Utah, Utah State, and UH all offering him. Good job of Maris taking on the block and just making a big play in the backfield right here. Fourth and we're going for it. Fourth and five coming up here. This is out of Duke Heffernan's uh, field goal range, but I think Kahuku needs something positive. And a flag is down, and Puno is going to give him a first down on the encroachment. Got to watch the hard count. 
Got to watch the hard count for it, though. Sativeni Kalfusi and uh, Trent Shiraki are creeping up in there. The big 38-yard gain for Heffernan. I'm going to move this ball down the field now into the red zone for Big Red. Left foul and Alomayab in the backfield. Salval going to throw past Heffern and incomplete. Kainalu Pu'u Robinson was out there. That throw is just outside. This is definitely a must-score situation, it seems like, here for Kuhoku. It, it definitely, you know, the, there's no energy right now. No mm -hmm. energy here for him. Puno is doing a good job right now. So Val went two of three for 50 yards. Hooked up with Heffernan and hooked up with Lokana Enos. Second and 10. And from the 17, Salval gonna fire it. It's caught here by Ethan Erickson. And Ethan Erickson just shy of the goal line. Down to the one. Nice. Here goes Salval. Nice out by Ethan Erickson. Catches the ball, turns, gets up field, makes the play. Good job. Officially a gain of two, first in goal. They're going to go heavy package to try and punch this one in. Alomayava, the back flag is down. I'm not sure if they were set prior to that snap. It looks like they put that elephant package back in, huh? And here at Kahuku, I mean, I don't know if elephants, elephants might uh, shortchange them, actually, with the amount of size they have up here. <laughs> Definitely. Koku got so many big guys, so many sawed-off uh, fullback type of players where, you, you know, you can load up and, and anybody can run the ball here. Is going to get Puno? They might have gotten to the zone. Oh. Defense! Defense! Essentially uh, cancel each other out as they offset each other. Well, at the two-yard line, Mayava is the back. Mayava to the end zone. Touchdown. Did Kahuku need that or what, Coach? Definitely, you know. <laughs> Direct snap, Mayava. They uh, power, no pull. They just got a good crush on the front side over there. Nice job, good double teams. Good job on the outside. I think that was Erickson out there. Mm -hmm. And he just walks right in. Duke Heffernan, eight of nine on extra points. Kuku gave up an opening drive touchdown, but on their second drive of the night, Wes Alomayava into the end zone. Game tied at seven here up north. Join us this week as we follow Hawaii skin divers whose good deed sets them up for a magical day of diving. Coming up on the next episode of Hawaii Skin Diver, Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. exclusively on Spectrum OC16. Attention blood thinner users. Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If you or loved one took Xeralto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-811-0279. Again, that's 1-800-811-0279. Important message for hernia mesh patients. If you or a loved one had hernia surgery between 2010 and 2016 and experienced serious complications, call Guardian Legal Network. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Physio mesh complications include infection, mesh migration, chronic pain, and a reopening of the hernia. Call to speak to an experienced lawyer now. If you don't win, you pay nothing. Call 800-787-1405. Wes Alomayaba got that one-yard rushing touchdown to tie the game. His cousin, who was a defensive coordinator on the JV staff, Lessa Mayaba, actually painted this Kahuku logo just last night. Uh, it is an absolutely gorgeous job, by the way. You don't see this a lot, by the way. Hand, not hand-painted, well, essentially hand-painted on the field here to 
knew it was a big game in a big atmosphere. Expect to get new bleachers next year and right in front of us are the Buffin Blue fans. We had a lot to cheer about. Some we, things to gripe about. Can we get a new turf field? Uh, let's, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that, right? I don't know if they let us have a turf field because when it rains hard, this place turns into a swimming pool. Yeah, they got to raise the whole thing 10 feet <laughs> trying to do that the last uh, few years. Kick to Terrell. And Vincent Terrell in traffic nearly broke free and busted a big one, but grabbed by his ankles and stopped right there, so Puno will have it. Just past the 25-yard uh, line. Tautaina Tevanga in on the stop. Right. Do you feel momentum building, shifting one way or another here? I do. This is a great matchup, you know, a great chess matchup right now. I think Koku right now needs to bring pressure off the edges and not keep bringing up the middle right now. And Brady went 7 of 11 so far here. Flag down. This is the third encroachment penalty here on Kohuku tonight. Prior to the snap, encroachment. Number 12, defense. Five yard penalty. Stern Carvalho saying we have to play error free ball. These penalties cannot aid the Buff and Blue here tonight. First down and five, Brady throwing up top. It is caught, got the toe in, did Falatea. To the 49, gain of 18. Good job, he raised it on the team. Falatea high points the ball, good catch. They're starting to pick on, on him right now out there. Peter John Matira and another flag. And the fourth encroachment tonight. Koku has to watch uh, Terrell out of the backfield, man. He's, uh, they're swinging him outside of the backfield, leaving him open too, which could be a problem coming up later on. Sterling Calvario help uh, lead this team to a JV championship three seasons ago. Back to Falatea. Over the shoulder, and he caught it again. He is having himself a night. 27 yard line. Gain of 19. Falatea Tomato is, is out there abusing him right now. Uh, something's got to happen, and they got to give that guy some help out there right now. And Brady one more time looks that way. Attacks middle. Tomato Falatea got a side block there from Kalahiki. Moving up the field. And Kanafuno Moana got him. Inbounds as it's ruled, and then the momentum took him out of bounds, so it's not a late hit, but still a good catch inside the 20. Good job again, the protections right there, slant inside, catches the ball, very close right here. We're tackling him out of bounds, I don't know, could have been a flag right there. Let's see Kanafuno Moana Vamu, trying to find some matchups, Brady, Whiffing there, throw it end zone, touchdown, Kanoa, Kalahiki. Flag out at the end of it. Penalty marker down. And Kalahiki is hurt. Nice job of him securing that ball. Skinny post, makes the play, touchdown. Here we go again, good pass protection. Avoids the rush, steps up, makes the throw. Out of way to hold on to that. Can I call it Hiki Tuesday in practice uh, when they were going ones versus ones. Took a pop from one of his own defenders, had the wind knocked out of him in that game. He was down for a couple of minutes, popped right back up and finished practice. And because the defensive intensity in those practices are so high, players sometimes get banged up from their own guys. Those are like usually the worst injuries. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like you step on the landmine, you know, self inflicted <laughs> by your own guy. Trying to hope that Kalahiki's okay, and they popped it uh, back up. The penalty is going to be assessed on the kickoff here, so the touchdown is good.
Nala Emerson had the hit on Kalahiki. You know, a lot of guys don't pay attention to the field goal, but this kid, uh, Horn, he's pretty impressive out here. Big guy, big leg. Grew up in Hawaii Kai, looked up to the previous Puno kickers, guys like Jet Toner, Kaimi Fairbairn, Alex Trifonovic. And I saw it and soaked in as much information as I could for those three guys. Now that he's a senior, he's actually teaching some of the younger kickers in those Puno football programs. So now Tim Horn to make it a seven-point game. You know, Coach Eric Hannum does a great job with the kickers at Pinnacle, man. I, I wish he was here tonight because I wanted to ask him who is his best kicker he's had so far. He's had a, a, num a numerous amount of those guys. So Tim Horn slides that one in, and it's 14-7 Punaho, who in this first quarter has 139 total yards of offense. It's that time again for the Hawaii Moji Blitz by Bank of Hawaii. The Blitz kicks off today with a and Moana Lua and Kaiser versus Pearl City. For more info on how to play, check out boh.com slash blitz. A lot to cheer about if you're wearing a buff or blue or buff in blue. Shock so far? What's, what's, what's kind of no, your take here? We knew this was going to be a good matchup, you know. Uh, I think I think Punahou has kind of solved the riddle of what is Kahuku, you know. They, they apply so much pressure up the middle that these guys are, are, are beating them at the quick game, you know. They're doing a good job. Turn protection props out to the to Punahou offensive linemen. They're doing a great job of protection. Also with Terrell. Quick game. Horns is doing a good job of spinning the ball and getting it to his guys. Those guys are catching the ball and, and they're trying to house that thing for six. Kuku's offense tonight, 12 plays, 88 yards, 65 of them through the air. How do you think Robbie Salvao has progressed at least through the first couple drives? I think Robbie's done a good job, you know. Um, obviously, I think if they just go back to their roots and start pounding the ball and play action, I think they'll be fine. Tim Horn gets ready to uh, kick this one away. Remember that 15-yard foul? is assessing the kickoff, so they're going to be kicking inside Kahuku territory at the 45-yard line. we will see a Robbie Salvao, first year on the varsity team, was a quarterback of the JV team the last couple of seasons. Today's 3 of 4 for 65 yards, which numbers sound great, but the most important statistic is not favoring Kahuku. That's a score. Down 7. Definitely. They're, they're, they're definitely in a dogfight right here. Um, I think Salvao is doing a great job, though. Everyone doing the horn chant. Squibbed it, and this one is out of bounds. That's a good job from Kahuku on special teams to let that one go out of bounds and take the penalty yards. And have a decent position on this drive. Definitely smart play on special teams. As a coach, if he touches that ball, you'll be screaming at him like, what are you thinking? But uh, it's tough good for job a, right there. It's tough for a player too, right? You're greedy, you want to have your moment, you want to scoop it up and try and try and come up with something, but. The smarter play always wins. If they put me back there, I probably would have tried to grab it. <laughs> Kick out of bounds. Kick your team. Even as a big guy, you know, you always dream about catching the ball and running. All right. <laughs> By the way, I mean, you're a cool alum, obviously, and walking on campus with you here, it was as if you were running for mayor. Everyone knew Coach Chris Nolle. Well, what's it like for you to be back on campus? It's, it's nice to be back home, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys thought I were coaching when, I, when they're saying, what are you doing? And I say, I'm in the box with OC. So it was kind of interesting. You know? Bobby, take it on the 35-yard line. First long. Masalo Mayava, five rushes, 11 yards here tonight. Tole Le Fau, who brings a little bit more of a power game at 235 pounds, runs it right forward. And, uh, Right through a small gap. Maris Liu fell on the stop to gain a three. We approach two minutes here to play. Koku's doing a good job right now of switching up their personnel. They go from 12 personnel to 20 personnel. Trying to, they're trying to figure out what's working for them right now. But definitely running the ball is working, has been working up front for them. Bruno's defense has definitely set the tone early on. Even their offensive efficiency has been great. Another run here for Tole LeFau. And LeFau runs it for about a couple more as Hiram DeFries Soronitman able to make the stop. Bring up third down and about four and a half coming up here. 
<laughs> Google's 0 for 2 on third down conversions tonight. It's going to be interesting what they're going to do here. Third and five. <laughs> Cornell trying to get behind their buff and blue team. Third down. Keep here, Salval in the backfield. He is hit from behind there by Trent Shiraki. One more time, erasing that one. Yeah, they, they spread out at 10 personnel there. Try to run a zone read. I don't know if that was the best of plays right there. And the punting unit onto the field here. Final half minute. Ethan Erickson will kick towards Alakai Gilman. And it's a high wobbly punt here for Gilman, who fair catches it. And around the 20-yard line. 13.6 remaining. And a penalty marker down. Nice punt by Erickson. Man. That was a he booed, he booed that one. This flag came down at the point of the fair catch. Well, the penalties have uh, really kind of racked up. We've, if they accept it, this will be the ninth combined flag that we'll have in the quarter. As a coach, you never like to see the laundry on the field, you know? Mm -hmm. Man, Marshall Harvest, one more time on the mic. Invalid fair catch signal. <laughs> Offense. Five yard penalty. <laughs> no, first down. Fair catch. Yeah. He didn't officially make a clear signal that fly, so his arm motion was incorrect as it's ruled. <laughs> And the reasoning for that is it's to try and eliminate deception when they, I think, adjusted that rule. Has to be a clear over the head, which, ap which apparently uh, was not done there from Alaka Gilman. So it'll move it back. And this could be the final play of the opening quarter here. With Brady tonight, 11 of 15 for about 43 and two scores. Brady pressured and devoured. Oh man, Tausili Fiatoa. Welcome back to Kahoku. Former Orem High School guy. A sack to send us to the second. 21 combined points. The big touchdown early on from Koa Eldridge. Mayaba answers back with one of his own. And then Kanoa Kalahiki. Snags this one for the go-ahead score. End of one, Punahou up seven. Bringing family together at Zippy's takes me back to my first time as a kid. Dad had his go-to order, mom had hers. Yet, I never could figure out what I wanted. It took a little while, but after coming back again and again, I finally figured out what makes me happiest. Zippy's very own garlic miso chicken is backed by popular demand, but only for a limited time. Enjoy every mouth-watering bite when you make your next stop, Zippy's. Friday Night Lights in Second City as the Buff and Blue come to town to get a much needed win. Couple A's youthful offense faces a tough test. Punahou, Couple A, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. This Spectrum Network's presentation of Prep Football is sponsored by Zippies. Your Hawaii Honda dealers. Chopo, the State of Hawaii Police Officers Union, and Jack in the Box. Back here in Kahuku on this beautiful 
Saturday night up north. It is 14 to 7 as we begin the second. With Chris Niola and Jimmy Benner on the sidelines, Felipe Ojastro. Happy to have you with us on Spectrum OC 16. It is 16 nothing on Spectrum X-Cast. Nidinani on top of Farrington. And coming across the right side was Kanafano Moanavamu. Yeah, you got to have a little discipline there. Fire to the slot. Encroachment. Defense, number 38. Five yard penalty, that remains stoop. They switched off the assignments here with uh, Peter Jamatara, and now it's Nohi Kanijo guarding Tomatoa Falafi on the outside. We have another penalty marker down and another encroachment here. Wow. Dead ball. Encroachment, number 99 defense. Coach, you've been a defensive coach well, at the prep penalty. level over at Iolani. How frustrating it is for a coach when your defense racks up those legs like that? It's very frustrating, you know. It's just undisciplined. you got to watch the ball. You, know? you, can't, you can't go off of their sound right there. I know Coach Cavalli is kind of hot right now. Second down and seven coming up. Brady swings that one out here for Moku Dancil Stevens. As, Steven, as Stevens is knocked down there by Mickey Ayu, one of the guys out there. Yeah, he gets the ball out to Stevens real quick. KJ Makatiag. Oh, and KJ Makatiag. Help uh, make the stop as well. It's a third down. Brady throws this one high, and going up top is the 6'2 junior, Kanoa Kalahiki, for the ninth Punahou first down. They attack Peter John Matira again, and he brings it in. Good job with the quick game once again. He goes up, Kalahiki high points that ball, makes a great play. You see the matchup there with the 6'2 Kalahiki on the 5'8 Peter John Matira. And again, it's Joshua Singh this time for Kahuku. Coming across. Dead ball. Encroachment. 43 defense. Outside. Five yard penalty. Down the rings one. You know, Punaho found a mismatch here. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to keep exploiting it until you come up with a different answer. Nine penalties for 63 yards tonight here for Kahuku. 50 seconds in, second quarter. Brady look towards Kalahiki and said, decides to throw this one away. Well, he felt the heat coming and just chucked that nearly into the stands. Their offensive line is kind of catching them with a, like a little flex. You know, they kind of flex up before they go down, forcing those guys to bite on motion and, and, and to take off right there. There's Robbie Tom, who got the offensive coordinator job in about uh, a few months ago. Actually, March, I should say. But he had a few months of time to implement a game plan, what he wanted to do. For the 09 Puno graduate. A bullet, it's caught. Here's Dancil Stevens. Near midfield. What a catch. 47 yard line. 11 first down yards. Nalu Emerson, the tackle. Same thing, turf protection. Brady gets it out. Dancil Stevens makes the quick catch. Good tackle there by Emerson. If not, he might be gone. Mm -hmm. Brady calm and poised and floating one up high. It's incomplete. They're trying to attack Tomatoa Falatea and Kanijo, who gets the new defensive assignment in a corner. He's trying to stifle him. You know, Kanijo, they, 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 they play him a lot of man over there by himself, and, and they, they kind of leave him on the sideline, on the, the opposition field sideline. You know, as a quarterback coach, you know, you trust your best guy, and you put him over there on the opposite side of the field. And Falatea tonight, six catches, 72 yards. He has burned Kahuku's defense in the opening frame. Brady on second and 10, wide open, everything. Here for Moku Dancil Stevens. That's a gain of about five and a half. Manafuno Monavalmu and uh, Peter John Matara make the stop. We have a helmet that popped off of uh, one of the offensive linemen, and that's a Trent Nomura, so he has to come out for a play. And in for him is Nava Akoa for all. Here he goes, spinning out on an arrow route. Great catch. They're just doing a good job of pitching catchy right now. They're giving scope with defense a lot of problems. Deepest completion tonight for Brady has only been 19 yards. They've been working short all night, and it's been effective. Pressure comes, middle throw, it's broken up. Batted away from Vincent Terrell by Kana Fonomo Anavamu. 
And I'll bring a fourth down coming up here. With four to go. Yeah, for Noi Moana, good, good pass breakup right there. Puno opting not to go for it on fourth down, or maybe at least try and hard count. But Tim Horn's going to line up. You know, in a tight game, you got to play the percentages, you know? You got to punt the ball. Tim Horn, one of the best in the country of a uh, penalty marker down. They might have to delay a game. You know, putting a whole eye on yeah, coming game. over from Damien, uh, special teams coach. Five-yard so penalty, down uh, remains four. Tricks up this lead. I'm guessing yes, son. <laughs> <laughs> we may not see it here, but I mean, at some point, right? <laughs> So here is Tim Horn kicking towards Heffernan and Canijo. And over and Canijo. Chase down there from Pooh Robinson. And Pooh Robinson, like a hawk, gets to him. Ooh, the six foot senior on special team stared him down the entire way. Good, good hustle by Poole Robinson. Tohoku gets the ball when you come back in a 14-7 game here on the North Shore. Putting on a show, an experience, there's a lot of moving parts. We actually had 300 associates working for us on one day. It gets crazy. How do you get the HR support with Simplicity HR? You take a team like that who know what they're doing, that's why you partner. How could we put on the best if we're not working with the best? So that's why we work with Simplicity HR. Give us a call at 791-4900 or visit us at simplicityhr.com. Big Fries took everything from me to keep my father from exposing the truth <laughs> about nacho fries. A rebellion is forming. Flip the switch. Is there anything that tastes better than this? Revenge. The future is not so far. Looks like you guys could use a hand. Rainbow Warrior Football is back on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Get a front row seat to all the action with a seven-game package at an unbeatable price. Go to Spectrum Channel 254 or call 643-2100 to sign up today. Hey, New City Nissan is Hawaii's premier Nissan dealer and a proud sponsor of high school athletics. You can visit them online at newcitynissan.com. New City Nissan in Kalihi. Ooh, got to get the offense going here. 59, or rather 95, excuse me, yards. Total offense so far. Middle open here for Salval, and Salval has got a downfield block, and Robbie Salval down the sideline. Robbie Salval, what a move. Chased out by Gilman. He just ran out a little gas right there towards the end. You got to be careful. He's got that ball in the bread bag. He got to put that thing away. Gain of 59. Saval backs up, looks to throw, nothing there. Takes off right there. Look at that ball. As a coach, you want to see him to put that thing, secure that ball high and tight. Right here, he just kind of runs out a little speed and steps on the sideline. Good run. Biggest play for either team here tonight, courtesy of Salvao. Only had 19 yards rushing last week against Konawina. After the gain of 59, Mayava, Liu Fao, chased him out of bounds. Marist Liu Fao, whose family is originally from Samoa. He's actually named after Marist High School. It's a big high school out there back home. He's been dealing with the uh, stomach flu earlier in the week, but Marist Liu Fao defensively. Pretty good here tonight. So have you ever been to Samoa? I've never. I've been invited, but I've never been to Samoa. It's awfully hot. Is it? Okay. <laughs> hotter than tonight, I imagine, right? Oh, definitely. Way hotter. <laughs> Humidity was at around 92 degrees on kickoff time. And we have a penalty here against Punahou. And here's Marshall. 
Good ball. The coachman. 92 defense. Five yard penalty. Down on two. Just five penalties for 21 yards tonight here for Punahou. You know, a lot of laundry on the field tonight. You know, coaches, you know, early in the season, you know, try to get it out of your system quick. Puno just trying to find something positive here. They're only down seven, but the offense has been sputtered a little bit. Mayava, oh, what a good cut there to get past the first wave. A flag is down. Mayava got past legend Montatia as he keeps the legs going and past the first down stick. Penalty marker is down here. And while they... Trying to sort this one out with the money note to phone Maris Liu finally making the stop. If accepted, this will be the 15th combined flag that we have had in the first 14 minutes and 37 seconds of the game. It's a flag a minute. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask. Defense, after this is to the goal. First down. Oh, that's a killer one. Yeah, Mile right here makes a great move. Good jump cut. Lowers his head. Get the mask in here, Legend Matatia, after uh, missing hard, that first wave. It's a hard one to see right there. You know, the umpire had the best angle, actually, uh, Robert, or Marshall Harvest from the backside of it, too, saw it. And so it's a first down. And a handoff for Mayava. Touchdown, Kahuku. Great job on the left side there. Beatty and Vimahi opening up the, the hole. Wide open spaces for Alo Mayava, who gets his fifth touchdown of the season. Wide open. Good, good blocking up front. Could have drove a car through there. Mm -hmm. The Hoku fans loving that one. Duke Heffernan, for his career, is 92% completing extra points. 60 of 65, 61 of 66. Wes Alo Mayava. Cousins of all the great Alos and Mayavas that played at Kahuku, making a name for himself, the senior. Sends us to break in a 14-14 game. E When the day turns into night, my hash browns turn into my $4 munchie mashup. Crispy hash browns and tasty white cheese mashed up with savory egg and bacon, buffalo chicken and ranch, or jalapenos and bacon. Each for just four bucks. Why? Because everything gets more interesting at night. Vampires wake up, werewolves come out, and the boogeyman gets his boogie on. So try my delicious $4 munchie mashups back for a limited time and keep the party going until the sun comes up. Ooh, $4 munchie mashups from Jack in the Box. Friday Night Lights in Second City as the Buff and Blue come to town to get a much needed win. Couple A's youthful offense faces a tough test. Punahou, Couple A, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. Enterprise scores around town. This game is going on at John Kaunana Stadium. Mililani, one of the favorites to take the OIA, is up 16 on Spectrum X Cast, 23 to 7. Here at Carlton E. Weimer Field, we got a 14-14 game. And on the two touchdown drives, Coach, it was one big play that helped fuel and spark the offense. The 38-yard catch from Duke Heffernan that got Mayava in from one yard out. And then how about Robbie Salvao's 59-yard run? That helped spark, and then the face mask penalty helped aiding in that touchdown drive. Definitely. Uh, Salvao, you just want to see him put away that ball because later on, you know, he might make another run and, and, and get hit and lose that thing. Could cost him the game later. But right now, we're in a dog fight, 14-14. Heffernan. Deep kick here to Terrell, who got it from the one-yard line. And Terrell on special teams. Get the feet going, was funneled. 
at around the 10-yard line. Nice gang tackle there. Can I leave? Or rather, Kala Ake Okahaku for Feely. He will make the stop. Terrell right there catches the ball. Nowhere to go. Great gang tackling. Well, if I feel it, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell the back. Puno has been awesome tonight. And we're going to get timeout taken by Kahuku. <laughs> now heading into uh, the field here tonight, you saw the, the clear red. You saw the buff and blue. And you saw some... Uh, competitive banters between the two programs because the locker rooms are very close to each other here at Carlton E. Weimer Field. So, you had to get all the Cuckoo guys into the locker room as Puno entered their locker room just so there was an extra chatter. And then during warm-ups on the field, little waves, little hellos. That's what it feels like here when these OIA ILH opponents battle it out. Now we're gonna see it all year long with the new OIA ILH Alliance. Definitely, you know, we were standing on the field earlier and you know, I was standing right there in the middle and you could just hear them both going at each other and, and talking smack. But you know, at the end of the day, that, you know, it brings out the best, you know, you wanna compete and you wanna compete with the best, you know, obviously a lot of guys banging their chest, but at the end of the day, you gotta prove it on the field. <laughs> Money to Fono early on. There you go. Our house. Whose house? Our time. Whose time? That's what makes high school football so great. Man. Competitive banter. Oh, it's the best. Dotted 14. Here's number 14. Brady over the top, incomplete. Nalu Emerson was covering up high. Koa Eldridge, the intended target. Kuku, after trailing in the toll yards department pretty much his entire game so far. It's up seven now, 169 to 162. Yeah, Brady just overthrew him just by a little bit. If not, he was in stride. He might have hit him and he gone for six right there. Brady's season high last year was uh, 204 yards against St. Louis October the 7th. Right now he's at 173. The second year varsity man. Grew up in Kailua. Handoff here for Terrell, and Vincent Terrell, uh, ankle tackle away from busting one through. It is Zion Ayu, he is the younger brother of Mickey Ayu. Able to make the stop, it's a gain of about eight. Zion Ayu, you don't, you never run out of uh, Ayus around here. <laughs> you know, I know the two big ends get a lot of the, the love, but this, this guy, he's a tough guy in the middle of the uh, heart of the defense right there. It's a sophomore. Quick hitter, caught, Eldridge. First down, Nalu Emerson to stop. Around the 32 yard line. Great catch by Eldridge. Nalu Emerson is getting a lot of tackles tonight. Twenty-seven yard line officially. There's another handoff to Terrell, and Mickey Ayu says, hey, kid, you ain't going anywhere. Just held on and hung on. And one of the team captains on this defensive side. It's kind of weird. It's like the first time I think we called Mickey's, Mickey's uh, name tonight. You know, it's been kind of quiet up there. You know, offensive line for Punahou doing a great job up front. In the last two years, his leadership ability has been great. But right now, going to plug up the run. Brady throws behind, but it's caught here for Kalahiku. And it come back to it. It went right to the ground. It's going to be about a yard shot of the first down. Good catch. Looks like, uh, you know, Punahou's trying to up-tempo these guys, get them going again, you know, create the mismatches and put them away. Terrell's the running back. Punahou is four of six on third down conversions tonight. Blake locked inside of 10. It's down to five now. They get it off. Pressure came and Brady escaped. Mickey Ayu from behind. First down, Brady. And the buff and blue. The Kahuku 48, a gain of 16. Good job by Brady making a scramble right there. I think that's one of the problems with this Kahuku defense, you know. Brady, nothing there. Close the guy. He gets out. Like I say, you know, this, this defense is so aggressive. They need to come to balance and make a play. For rush, Brady fires over the top. It's caught. Koa Eldridge. Inside the five. First and goal. 
Two guys went deep and got wide open, Coach, and Cole Eldridge made him pay. Hugh Brady had two options right there. He had two guys wide open. Takes a little time to develop, but now you're going deep, right? You, you get them going shallow, shallow, short, short, and then take a shot. After the gain of 45, it's first and goal here. Fake to Terrell. Brady fires. Incomplete oh. short of Moku Dancil Evans. Here you go. Good play fake. Connor providing the pressure right there. Mm. Don't quite get the pass there. If he gets that, that might be six right there. Probably Adnay is going to take a timeout. Punho answers right back. This has been shifting back and forth. They've run 13 more plays, a lot of them short, but our first deep ball of the night and the biggest passing play from Brady gets to 45 yards. I think a lot of questions, Coach, heading in was how well was Punho going to do with Brady now running the offense after Stephen Barber did it the last couple of years. What I don't have think, you seen from Brady tonight? I don't think they're missing a beat. You know, I think they came out with a great game plan. You know, they're showing the, the short game, mm -hmm. uh, completing passes, 10 yards, 10 yards, and finally they took a shot. You know, eventually you're going to catch those guys sleeping. And, uh, you know, after last week with the Kona-Wina game, kona Wine put up some yards where they, they were wide open in the scene. Mm -hmm. We're going to see Kahuku again next week as you take a look at the big board. They travel to the west side and battle Wainai. That's on Spectrum OC16. Then they'll take on Kapole right here. Kuku at St. Louis on Spectrum XCast. St. Louis looking really, really good. One of the best defense in the state right now. Sitaveni Kalfusi, a 6'3", 230-pound senior. Power back, primarily defense on the last couple of years. It's a pretty good option if you want to punch it in here on second and goal. Leaning forward. And he'll get down and around the one. I think everybody knew with the big fella coming in, they're going to hand it off. <laughs> Puno wants to push it a little bit more here, but now they got to get time to get the play call from the sideline with six minutes to go here in this first half. Third and goal. Dalfusi is stood up and he crossed the line for the touchdown. The big fella going in, Kalfusi, the D lineman. Tawia Tupuola had that initial wrap up, did everything he could to send him back. But all 235 pounds of Kalfusi forces that one into the end zone. Horn hands it off. He just lowers his shoulder and keeps driving. Big push up front, push, push, push. A little closer, I think he gets the ball just over the, the goal. Yeah. That looked really close on that replay. Yeah. But his back was facing the end zone. The ball was clutched to his stomach. In the meantime, it's Horn to slide that one in. Punahou has never trailed in this game. They've given up their lead, but they reclaim it here on Kalfusi's two-yard Russian touchdown. This is a great, great chess match tonight, you know, answering each other left and right. I think uh, Punahou right now is, is, is holding the, um, they're doing a great job. Every Kahuku score, it seems they have to you know, climb Mauna Kea to get to the end zone, right? And Puno offensively is, for the most part, kind of making it look like backyard football in some instances. It is, you know, it's spread offense, you know. If, if you're going to be good, you got to up-tempo them, you know. They, they're doing a great job of uh, protecting the passer. Not much in the run game, but, you know, that's not what they're about. You know, it's kind of like St. Louis, too. You know, they're they going to live and die by the run and shoot. Google has won four out of the last five head-to-head -head meetings. Puno leads the series 9-6. to six. This is the 16th overall meeting. They first met back in 1950 in a 40-to-nothing Puno victory at the, termite pa at the Termite Palace. The Termite Palace. In old Honolulu Stadium. I don't know if I was born yet. 1950. No, you weren't. <laughs> Definitely not, my friend. Definitely not. New return men here, Mason Paulo and Zeeland Matangi, a junior and a sophomore respectively, awaiting the kick here of Tim Horn.
First and 10 at the 20. Here for Kahuku. Kahuku tonight has run 19 plays for 169 total yards of offense. The running game trying to be established here, but out of the 169 total yards, 104 have been on the ground. And out of that 104, 59 of them were courtesy of Robbie Sobel. Yeah, definitely on the scramble. Interesting with two timeouts remaining here in the final 5.46 of the half. Robbie Sobel's brother, Cody Sobel, was an outstanding defensive back for Kahuku. Another keep here for Sobel. Late pitch, it goes out here to Mayava. And Mayava, good play there. You get to see a little option right there. I look at E. Gilman and Kainalupu Robinson tag team on the tackle. Here we go. Little Zoni, Saval out. Slows down, pitches the ball. Alo Mayava finishes. You hear that term so often, smash mouth football. Well, as offenses have evolved around, so is the Kahuku's. This ball goes to Lafau and run forward four or five yards. Lemma Atuwai, by the way, is the new offensive coordinator this season. So both teams with brand new OCs. Kalane is in his 20th season as the head coach of the Puno Buff and Blue. Jordan Carvalho in year number one. Second down and five from the 43. Clean pocket, Mayava winding up downfield. Hello, Heffernan. Incomplete, Poole Robinson breaks it up. It kind of hangs up there for a little while. Saval dropped back, the little fake, looks, looks, throws. Kind of leaves it hanging up there. Mm. He tries to high point that thing, but doesn't come down with it. Robinson at six feet. Heffernan at 5'9". Buku has not converted a third down tonight. 0 for 3. Middle. It's dropped. Incomplete. Lokana Enos was open. Gilman had the hit. And it's fourth down for Kahuku. Lokana Enos got to hang on to that get that first down. He brings that in. They got a first down. That middle was wide open, Coach. Yep, here we go. Good protection. Saval looking, sees him wide open, throws the ball, puts it right in there. You got to catch that thing. Nathan Erickson will punt this one away. Liu Fowl had the pressure on it. And this one sends Gilman way back, and they'll have it at the 20-yard line, a net punt of 37 yards. It's a big drive here for Kahuku, even though they get the ball back after deferring the option, winning the toss to start the third. They haven't trailed by more than seven points here tonight in the way this offense has been clicking here for Puno. It was a big test here for this defense here in the final four and a half before the half. Yeah, definitely. You want to see them make some adjustments right now. You know, they're still bringing uh, Mickey IU up the middle and, you know, you're leaving these guys on the island out there. And uh, like I said, those guys are kind of really quickly dinking and dunking them and obviously taking a shot. So we'll see. In the ILH, you know, so much heading into the season, so much about the ILH was talked about St. Louis and their potential three-peat this year being the best team, and they are the number one team, and one of the best in the country. Puno's, ment Puno's mentality is basically, hey, we're going to shock the state. Just you watch. But right now, Brady gets shocked off the edge by Mickey Ayu. Just as we say, right, a little quiet of, of, of Mickey Ayu, and he goes out and makes a play and proves us wrong. <laughs> My goodness. The sack for him. He had four and a half last year. He kind of runs real quick through uh, Duke Clemens right there and makes a play. Are you with four tackles here tonight? Swing it outside. Emerson had to push Vincent Torell out. Nice run play by Punahou here. Something they haven't shown. Here we go. We get a pin and pull. You got Duke Clemens out there clearing it out. Terrell making a great run. Big third down coming up here for the Buffin Blue. 
Six of eight, they have been awesome tonight. 75% completion rate on third down. Third and four for Brady. Short pass, it's caught. And Emerson gonna try and drive. Denzel Evans back, but the power here of Evans forces that one through. First down. Brady with the quick hitch and a completion there. Moko only caught one pass last year, and that was early August against Moana Lua. He's been great tonight. Terrell trying to bounce outside. And uh, nearly got undercutted there from Peter John Mataros. Enough to funnel him out. I love this play right here. A little G scheme, pin and pull series. Get Terrell to the edge. Robbie Toma, the OC, speaks so highly of Vincent Terrell. And by his peers as well. He's, you got to watch this guy run. He just runs with a nasty attitude. I think he's a wrestler, too. Second down and nine. Brady, pocket collapsing, and so is Brady. Sack here from Kahuku yet again, and it's Zion Ayu. So the two Ayu bros get in on the sack party. Back to back, huh? Big bro, little bro. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Zion beats two guys, comes in, finishes them, wraps them up, makes the tackle. Nice sack. First sack of the year here for Zion Ayu. That's a big play. It's a loss of seven, and now it's third and 16 here with three to go. 19 of 28 for 239 here for Brady. They bring heat, they throw it middle, and it's dropped and open with Kalahiki. Would have been a first down, couldn't hang on. Here you go, cross dog in the middle, applying the pressure just a little bit behind it. And if you're a Kahuku fan right now at home, you're exhaling. Yeah, definitely. They needed a good stop right here. Tim Horn's been averaging 41 and a half per punt tonight. This one is blocked. The ball is out. It is free and scooped up for a touchdown by KJ McCutteog. I think Mickey IU right there made the big play with the big block right there. KJ TD. Turnovers. Mickey Ayu, along nice. with Ace Kalfusi, goes Ariel. And it's KJ Makatiog. The recovery in the end zone for the touchdown. Mickey Ayu gets his right hand on that ball, forces a turnover. Nice job. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Wow, KJ Makatiog, third year of the varsity team. His brother Malcolm played here at Kahuku several years ago. He worked hard in the offseason trying to earn a spot into the starting lineup. Ended up in the second depth chart, but makes a massive play here. And what pressure from Kalfusi and Ayu? Well, that, that from that angle it looks like Kalfusi got the ball, huh? Yeah. And look what I found, says KJ. <laughs> Quick six on the board. And so it's the defense that creates a big offensive play, if you will, to score some points. Huge turnover. Now with 2.39 here to go, and a couple of timeouts remaining for Punahou. If I'm Punahou, Kahuku essentially is the fly at the party at Alamona Beach Park. It's you know, definitely, right? definitely. They just won't get away. As many times as you swat it, Kahuku is hanging around here and trying to keep that 48 home game winning streak on the line. This one's going to go out of bounds. First and 10 at the 35. Hawaii Honda dealers will drive us to the next five games. The upcoming schedule for each of these two. Puno's got to... Go to Second City and then go to Kalihi and then go to Central Oahu after their bye after that Farrington game. 
Goku will go to Y9. We'll have that game for you on Spectrum OC16. We'll have Kapole on Spectrum OC16 as well. And the St. Louis Crusaders chomping at the bit, waiting for yet again another rematch. That game, by the way, is at Aloha Stadium. And then that other big one in the OIA, massive match of Mililani, September the 29th. These first few weeks of the prep football season are always interesting because some guys are out because of ineligibilities. Some are out because of injuries over the summer. By that time, if everything goes perfect, no one's going to be at full strength. I, look, I think if you look down three weeks, September 7th, Kaluku, St. Louis, yeah. and then the week yeah. after, St. Louis Puno is going to be two back-to-back -back weeks. Just park your car right now at the stadium. Oh, Brady goes down! Tosili Fiatoa! <laughs> Tausi Filator looks like he comes out unblocked off the edge. Yep, untouched, makes the big play right there. Brady fires this one. It is juggled and incomplete by Eldridge. KJ Makatiag. In the mix, Tuila Tupuola applied the pressure. It is third down and long. I think he might have heard footsteps on that one. He kind of looked down, looked up. What does a sack do for a young quarterback's mentality? It might rattle you, gotta throw you off your timing a little bit, you know. Five sacks tonight. Here for Kuku. Pressure there. That throw is incomplete. A tie. Kuku will get the ball inside of two minutes to go in the half. He takes another big hit right here. Oh, he, he releases the ball and gets hit right there. Who's that? Tupa Ola. And Tim Horn will have to punt this one away. Remember the pressure last time from Kalfusa, who got the block in the recovery from KJ Makatiag. There's a game tying touchdown. All that noise that Puno fans were making just in front of our position, a uh, bit, bit quiet over these uh, last three plays. Kind of been quiet on both sides. You know, they really haven't cranked <laughs> yeah. up the band in the tomahawk chop. Kind of Moana Vamu applied the heat there. Horn got it away. And this one is going to be tumbling down and around the 26 yard line. 46 on the punt with 145 remaining. Now in this situation, once the referees see that the players have given up on trying to retrieve it, the ball essentially is going to be marked dead. So even had he picked it up, it wouldn't be like a possession and a lost ball. It would be marked at the spot of the touch. So knowing no, no, he probably would have picked it up. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of one of those hard head kids. Right. <laughs> Hello, Mayava's the back. He runs flat, attack middle, Tole Le Foul. Maris Leo Foul's got to try and make the play, and he does. The push out of bounds. The gain of a dozen for Leo Foul. 97 seconds to go. Looks like they try to run a double screen where they swing the back to the right and come back to the left here. <laughs> nice catch by Le Foul. Bumbling and stumbling out of the end zone. Field goal range for Duke Heffernan, by the way, is around 35 yards. The ball would have to be at the about 54 yards from this spot. A bullet that's caught over the middle by Heffernan, who shut up a tackle, and Duke Heffernan brought down at the 35 yard line. Gain a 27. And nice. Dylan Lundberg, the tackle. Nice catch by Duke Hefner. Catches the quick slant. Here you go, Saval. Good protection up front. Great job. Catches a quick slant. Makes a miss. Turns. Gets up field. Gets a first down. Now Sterling's pumped up. 80 seconds to go. Fly down in the backfield as Salval. Is that one down by Kalfusi. Saval is doing a great job playing right now. I just, I just worry about him, you know, carrying that ball. And a holding call to send this one back. 
This is the uh, 10th penalty here against Kahuku. Interesting thing to note in uh, relation to Sterling Carvalho and the penalties. Holding. 75 Holding. offense. <laughs> 10 yards for the spot of the foul. You play first down. So depending on what penalties they accumulate, they pay for it the next <laughs> practice first with some up-downs. And it's not just the players, it's also Sterling Carvalho. He's saying, if I got to hold my kids accountable for playing smart, I got to do the same as a coach. So he actually gets down on the ground and actually does the up-downs, which says a lot about the character and the style of his coaching. Yeah, you know, Sterling, you know, it's all about the discipline, you know. He's going to hold his guys accountable. Minute to go. Google gets the ball to start the second half. They're trying to just take the lead here. First and 29. Salval leans forward. Brought down by Maris Liu foul. Still a couple of timeouts uh, here for Google if they want to use it. They're a ways away here. Only got three out of that, so they might just take this one to the half. I'd like to see him take a shot. Second down. Left foul. <laughs> Dips the head. 21.7 remaining. Timeout taken. Here by Kahuku. Sir Carvalho was also the athletic director at Hawaii Technology Academy, a charter school. It's a pretty far drive getting up here to the North Shore, but when he got the job, even before he was formally released, I mean, his phone was blowing up. He was getting all the text messages. And when you get a head coaching job at Kahuku, you're, you might as well turn off your phone because, I mean, it's really going to test your data plan with the amount of uh, people that will send congratulations and well wishes. And Sir Carvalho uh, dealt with that uh, back in February. Oh, definitely. So much love out here, man. Everybody everybody wishes them nothing but the best, you know, especially the Kofu family. <laughs> of course, you know, being a head coach of a Kofu team, I mean, that, come, that job comes with a lot of pressure, obviously, right? I mean, whether you're coaching at St. Louis or at Kofu, those are probably two of the hardest coaching gigs to not only get, but to sustain success. Just pressure packed, and Sterling's done a nice job so far. And right now, in a 21-21 game, he's got 21 seconds left. Third down coming up here. I'd like to see him go on the top and take a shot right here. Try to get some points on the board. Mayava the back, heifered into the top of your screen. They shift that way. So about trying to get the feet set, and he's sacked by Maris Liufo. Great job by Maris Liufo. At half a sack last year, he gets one tonight to send us to the locker room. What a half of football, huh? Oh, definitely. We got some match here, 21-21, going into the half. Forced turnovers, offensive, offensive efficiency. Put on 250 yards of total offense. Who went 237 of total yards. It's been hot. It's been furious. It's been physical. What else can you expect? We're in Kahuku, and we're tied at 21 on Spectrum OC. Imagine experiencing this level of wow, this heightened state of car buying bliss. These feelings are not uncommon at the Honda Summer Spectacular event, where you could get a great deal on the Honda Pilot with seating for up to eight. This euphoria is only available at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. So come experience it for yourself. We see it all the time. Visit your local Honda dealer and test drive the Honda Pilot, named part of 2018's best SUV lineup in America. Every moment makes a difference. Every patient deserves the best. Polymomi brings you quality care and the largest and most experienced cardiac team serving Central and West Oahu. Award-winning service and the region's only Level 3 trauma center. Plus access to more than 50 specialties from stroke to oncology, bariatrics to women's health. Healthier is what happens every day at Polymomi, one of the integrated medical centers of Hawaii Pacific Health. 
You're watching Spectrum OC16, 100% original, 100% local. If you or a loved one used a proton pump inhibitor, such as Nexium, Prilosec, or Prevacid, and then developed chronic kidney disease, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-441-3921. 1-800-441-3921. Again, that's 1-800-441-3921. Listen up, America. Are you or a loved one suffering with an addiction to alcohol, opiates, prescription painkillers, or other drugs? There is hope. Medication-assisted treatment is proven most effective for opiate addiction recovery. Utilizing medications such as methadone, suboxone, and subutex combined with inpatient treatment, you can achieve lasting recovery. Most insurance is accepted, so call us now. Please call 800-614-5451. We well, expected a tie one. So far, we have that. 42 combined points. Split them right down the middle. 21 all here in the final open game of week one in the OIA ILH Alliance. ILH is 2 0 so far after day number one. And right now, Kahuku trying to keep that 48 home game winning streak alive. And of course, if you are on this Kahuku campus, you have to make a stop at Kahuku.org. It is the official school store of everything Kahuku Athletics. Uh, it's just behind the press box and has. Shirts from Tykes, from Baby Cakey, to all the way to 5X. <laughs> it's a massive shirt out there in that Kahuku store. It's got shirts and all kinds of cool stuff. I need the 5X. <laughs> so some of the new stuff in there, they actually have a brand new athletic ball. So you can get a Kahuku basketball or a Kahuku football. If you have a Kahuku sticker and you have it on your car, you're pretty much good to go in this community. It is a student-run, student-operated, and everybody at Kahuku.org does a phenomenal job. You said inflating the uh, brand new Kuku footballs, which actually some of the kids are playing in the end zone. Uh, it is very well run, and um, it is without a doubt the best school store anywhere in the state. And a lot of Red Raider swag out in the stands during a 21-21 game. Great to have you with us with Chris Nyola, Felipe Ojasco, Jimmy Bender in just a moment. All right, we saw 24 minutes of some hard-hitting football. What do you make out of it? Man, it's a, it's a battle going out there right now. Uh, it's a good it's a good chess match. You know, looking at the adjustments being made. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed right now with Pono. You know, they came out, they executed their game plan to a T. You know, they're hitting the quick, quick passes, protecting the quarterback, and obviously taking a shot. Uh, I'm really impressed with Brady right now. They were dominated in the first quarter. Was Kahuku's defense? What did you see change in that second quarter to allow them to be so effective? I think they got some pressure uh, later off the edges. Uh, Filitoa and then uh, the IU boys. You know, they they got a couple sacks right there, and then obviously the big turnover with the punt. Let's take a look at some of the buff and blue highlights from those first two quarters. In the quarters, I saw them combine for 250 total yards of offense. Brady tonight, 19 of 31 for 239 yards. It is a career high performance here on day one of the uh, OI ILH Alliance. But the big catches from Koa Eldridge, Tomatoa Falate, who was pretty much non or insignificant in that second quarter. They shut him down, but some of the other guys offensively did well here for the Buffalo. Definitely. They were, they, they were a little off in the second quarter, but in the first quarter, man, it, it was unstoppable, man. I'm, I'm impressed with Falatea and Evans and this whole receiving crew at Eldridge, too. Let me take a look at Kanoa Kalahiki, who got banged up after that touchdown. Brady, who knows that being the quarterback of Puno, high risk, high reward, and boy, he was being rewarded in spades. The big bomb to Koa Eldridge, and then Sikiveni Kofusi able to get the rushing touchdown to punch that one in. It would put Punaho up seven at that point, but then Akuku's uh, block punt, which represents the only turnover of the game, ended up being the game tying touchdown. This is everything we would come to expect here between OIA and ILH. Definitely, I just want to kind of see what the, the adjustments going into halftime, you know, as, as, a, as a player, you know, you, you expended a lot of energy out here and, and you, you got to have a lot of energy coming up, and especially in the third, and obviously you got to finish the fourth quarter. But uh, as a coach, you know, you got to make some adjustments here. I think Kaluku has to bring bring more pressure off the edge. Is, uh, be careful up the middle because, like I said, Punahou offensive line is doing an amazing, amazing job. You know, Trask, Iosefa, O-line coach, uh, Doug Violetti, I talked to them earlier in, in the day, and they're, they're executing their game plan to a tee. Let's take a look at what Kahuku did in the first half. Kahuku's offense sputtered a little bit. Remember, they went three and out on their opening drive, but finally, after the big play from Duke Heffernan to take it 38 yards down the field, it was capped off by this rushing touchdown by Wes Alomayava. 
who in the first half had nine rushes, 44 yards, and two scores. Buck 30, as Coach mentioned last week against Carolina. One big play after another helped fuel Kahuku in that first half. Definitely. They're doing a good job on offense. Uh, you know, I really like the play of Saval right now. You know, obviously right there, you just want him a little more ball security, but I I'm just really impressed with the way Saval played. And, and Wesley Alo Al as you seen right there, good blocking up front. But uh, he's the bell horse that you're going to hang your hat on, and, and you're going to ride with that right there. Wesley Alo Mayal, remember he had a fractured spine last season, but this was uh, the big play that tied the game, the block. And then the scoop and score, you're from KJ Makatiag. Johnny Kapus. on the spot. <laughs> yeah. We'll get the free six right there. We'll take it, though. <laughs> got up there and got the block. All right, what adjustments do you kind of see here moving forward in the second half? What do each of these te two teams need to do to come out with a win? I think uh, Puno on offense just needs to keep what they're doing, you know, take the quick passes. I really like Tyrell. I think he could be a, a difference maker, especially swinging him out of the backfield. They're doing a great job. You know, they had a little protection problem right there, but uh, – just continue what they're doing because I think Brady's doing an amazing job. Kahuku just pound the ball. And then I think the, the big adjustment for Kahuku is, is to find out, find out, make some adjustments on defense to, to show them some, maybe something different that they haven't seen. What we have seen is a 21-21 game as we approach kickoff for the third quarter. That's coming up in just a bit. Halftime here at Carlton E. Weimer Field. Two behemoths on the ballot in this primary election night. All squared. Hello Hawaii, Tanari Ma'afala, President of Shopo. Together with our spouses and our children, we thank you Hawaii for the outpouring of your support and heartfelt aloha expressed through your letters, phone calls, and in-person regards. Rest assured Hawaii, inspired by your support and the true aloha spirit, we will continue to lay down our lives for you and your ohana and for our visitors from abroad. And as always, stay safe, live aloha, and God bless. The business is tough. So many people want a piece of you. When we were down, First Hawaiian Bank helped to get us back up. We are friends. Friends, friends. And now we're starting a foundation. And if I can teach them uh, younger artists and further their career, then I think that's what I should do. We are friends, everybody's friends. Friends, friends. Bringing family together at Zippy's takes me back to my first time as a kid. Dad had his go-to order, Mom had hers. Yet, I never could figure out what I wanted. Very own garlic miso chicken is backed by popular demand, but only for a limited time. Enjoy every mouth-watering bite when you make your next stop, Zippy's. Really, putting on a show, an experience, there's a lot of moving parts. We actually had 300 associates working for us on one day. It gets crazy. How do you get the HR support with Simplicity HR? You take a team like that who know what they're doing, that's why you partner. How could we put on the best if we're not working with the best? So that's why we work with Simplicity HR. Give us a call at 791-4900 or visit us at simplicityhr.com. Back here in Kahuku, all tied at 21. The Buff and Blue and the Red Raiders. Kahuku trying to get to 2-0. Puno trying to start off their season on the right foot with a win at 1-0. We talk about all the pride here up north in Kahuku. Well, when you walk on campus, and as we go on campus, we're going to take you some of the interesting things here. Each graduation class leaves their mark by designing a tile, and that tile gets put into a mural. There you see Kingsley IU is part of the first class that actually did this back in 1988 around the gym along the classrooms, by the library, at the front office. These tiles are everywhere. You filled out a tile? Yeah, you guys just passed those. Oh, right there? Okay, good. Right there, yeah. And we, we purposely put that in there. With, uh, and it, it's just uh, some of the cool things that you see on this uh, Kahuku campus, which uh, makes this school one of the uh, not only best in the state, but really best in the country in its un uniqueness and uh, its culture. It is a fun atmosphere when there's any kind of event here at Kahuku. Definitely. So much community support, man. Um, I can't tell you, going back to the playing days in high school, it hasn't changed, you know. And, you know, what needs to change here, especially for Kuku in that second half, were the penalties. Ten penalties, a lot of them. Some undisciplined football in stretches that allowed Punahou to move the ball down the field and score. You can break down the numbers as you take a look at the halftime stats. They are delivered by Pizza. The one turnover that you're going to see here is the one on the blocked punt that ended up in a touchdown. But what do you see in these numbers, Coach? Yeah, uh, 
right now, rushing yards, you know, Kauku, obviously they're a rushing team, 100 yards, passing yards, 104, total offense, 230, pretty evenly with Punahou, 250, obviously their passing yards, you know, Brady's done a good job for 239 right there. But yeah, um, the penalties, 10 for 82, a lot of those are pre-snap penalties, which are, you know, unnecessary. Turnovers one, obviously converted to a, to a score for Kauku, but uh, other than that, I really would like to see the third down conversions get better. They, they have to get it better to win this game. When we come back, we'll check in with Jimmy on the sidelines. It's on the way. We'll give you second half kickoff. It's coming up next. Kahuku and Punaho tied at 21. Cheesy Bites pizza season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip. Pop Icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out pizzas the hut. Friday Night Lights in Second City as the Buff and Blue come to town to get a much-needed win. Couple A's youthful offense faces a tough test. Punahou, Couple A, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. Engraving and Trophies, the official provider for Spectrum OC16 and Spectrum XCast. You're watching Spectrum OC16, 100% original, 100% local. You've probably seen the Hawaiian Telecom offer for TV and internet. Looks pretty good, right? Better look again. No HD, no popular cable channels, no TV service outside Oahu, no phone service included. Hawaii's technology leader? <laughs> no. And they're not locally owned. They're now owned by Cincinnati Bell. At Spectrum, we have all that plus exclusive local programming and over 1,400 local employees bringing you the best in TV, internet, and voice throughout Hawaii. Spectrum. If you or a loved one used a proton pump inhibitor such as Nexium, Prilosec, or Prevacid and then developed chronic kidney disease, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-893-3656. 1-800-893-3656. Again, that's 1-800-893-3656. This Spectrum Network's presentation of prep football is sponsored by New City Nissan, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Welcome back to Kahuku High School. We're at the half. We have a tie game between the Buff and Blue of Punahou and the Red Rainers of Kahuku. How's it? Jimmy Bender here on the sidelines. You can see the keiki behind me right there. Some of our youth here tonight. And I wanted to bring up something, speaking of these youth, that Felipe and Chris were talking about earlier, and that is the old Termite Palace, Honolulu Stadium. You know, there's a whole generation like these young kids behind me who have no idea that there used to be a stadium right there on King Street, right by the Rosses, if you're wondering, if your kids are going, where? There's a stadium. Yeah, right by the Rosses over there. Well, I talked to Kale Ane about that because guess what? Kale used to play there back in the day when he was in high school. So we talked about the old Termite Palace and what it was like. He told me describing this place, he said, look, first off, boiled peanuts. That's what everybody says when they talk about the Termite Palace, the boiled peanuts there. But the other thing he said was, imagine crowds of like 25,000 people there to watch high school football games. It was absolutely absolutely electric and he said the other thing about it is try to imagine what you're seeing here tonight for the vibe and multiply that by 10 that's what it was like and we've had a fun time here tonight Felipe Chris I know you guys uh, remember at least the old Honolulu Palace boiled peanuts any of that stuff ring a bell not really, but uh, <laughs> I can't believe like twenty five or 30,000 people would fit in that place exactly, down there at the yeah. park if you ever see the park down there. And rickety, too. That's what I heard. It was just absolutely rickety. That's what I call it the termite palace. Definitely. And you know what's funny? Right where you are, behind you, where the kids are, man, I remember in elementary, that was the proving grounds right there. Where we used to have uh, throw a slipper up, go get it, and that's how you kind of <laughs> met your friends, you know. That's how you kind of met everybody. But like maybe 82, 83, that, that was the proving grounds there right there behind you. Yeah, Felipe and I talked about it before the game. Some of these uh, little side games go 
going on here behind both of the end zones are actually really fun to watch. Yeah. You would have been really surprised about the hits that were going on there with no pads. <laughs> but that's I guess that's how you got to hit somebody and then right. get pick them up and be like, hey, buddy, and now you guys are best friends. Can't wait to watch this second half, guys. Back to you. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. You know, someone who does know that uh, old Honolulu Stadium very well is a guy who's very well respected in this community. That's Tommy Heffernan Sr., who uh, takes care of the locker room. He is the boss when he's on campus, and he doesn't want us mentioning his name, but we're going to do it anyway because he deserves some credit. You know, he was a player here at Kahuku back in the 60s, and he coached with Cal Lee for about a decade and a half. And he said, you know, those places were just rocking, 15, 20,000 people. And also, if you're a football player, you know, you would try and press some of the ladies out there, and you knew a lady would like you if she would walk up and give you a half-gallon pog. They would walk up to you after the game and give it to you, and that's how you know that you were... You had somebody in your radar. If, if everybody who knows Uncle Tommy Heffernan yeah. knows he's yeah. a character, man. Yeah. There's a great pal, Eldridge, our Spectrum sports colleague, the University of uh, Hawaii Baseball, and uh, well, the big stars out here tonight. You know, everyone was waiting for this game, and there are just people from Kahuku and Punahou, past and present, all eyes locked in on this marquee matchup. Here's what begin the uh, third quarter. Remember, Kahuku won the toss and elected to defer, so big red. We'll get the ball here. What do you want to see offensively early on that if your Sterling Carvalho gives you confidence that the rest of the game is going to be? I, I think I'd stick to the game plan and keep running the ball. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more play action out of it, but uh, I think right now they're doing a good job on offense. I think, like I said, I think they need to make adjustments on the defense to stop this Puno offense, which is doing a really great job. Maris Liu fouled defensively for Puno has been great. Six tackles and a sack. Peter John Matira. Seven tackles as well, but uh, the big stat that kind of sticks out defensively, Kuku's got five total sacks in those first 24 minutes. Yeah, definitely. I, I think they, they're going to find a way maybe to dial up some more pressure, maybe some outside pressure, bringing it from the outside, giving them a different look, and uh, maybe they'll call some more sacks here in the second half. There we see Maris Liu foul, one of the best in the state at his position plays with so much aggression. It's good to see that he's back to full health after dealing with the stomach flu. I feel like there's so much pressure right now. You can almost feel it on both sides. I think like it's like a bend don't break kind of type of atmosphere right now. And, and this is guys are guys are holding on to their seat of thing like what's going to happen? And this is just week 1 of the OI ILH Alliance. Definitely. It's definitely exciting. We got to see who's going to get the energy and finish this game strong. Mason Paulo and Zeeland Matungi are back deep to return the kick of Tim Horn. We won a kickoff contest about uh, a week ago during the Chris Saylor camp over at Kamehameha Kapalama. One of the best in the country has been automatic touchback power, and this one is no different. That one was very close to becoming a penalty, but it bent in on the inside of the pylon and through first and 10 at the 20 here for Kohuku. Five of eight, 104 yards here for Robbie Salval. One of two quarterbacks, Thornton Alapa, the other one here for the Red Raiders. There's a third option that they were trying to groom into that spot. That's Mana Fonomoana Valmu, who's a starting safety. He had some time taking snaps of the ball last week against Kona Wina. And coach is saying over the last seven days for Robbie's understanding the offense a little bit more, that confidence is growing and just trusting his reads. Has peaked and valleyed a little bit in quarters one and two. What will happen here to start? A keep here and a pitch to Wes Alomayava, and a cutback. Right? He cuts so well, and that's what made him kind of famous during the JV season, his freshman year. Legend Matautia makes a stop. It's a gain of about a dozen here. Good start. Yeah, I really like this play right here. He fakes it, comes back out. Speed option, tosses it off. You want to definitely put it in the hands of Alomayava right here. The 11 first down of the game, the first of the half. And the handoff for Mayava. Sterling Carvalho saying, hey, you know, we want to try and shorten the game and keep Puno's offense off the field. Trent Shiraki, ILH honorable mention selection last year, makes the stop for the third year varsity guy. Shiraki having a good game tonight. Early tackle for a loss earlier. Second down and seven. Randolph here for Tole Lefau and Lefau, who's just a 
tough guy to take down. His lower body strength is positive. I really like this player, man. Plus, he's got great hands out of the backfield. I like to see him throw him a little more. The tackle was made by Alakai Gilman and Hiram DeFree Saranipan. Third down here. Remember, Kahuku has not converted a third down all night. This is much more manageable. It's third and five. A third and three officially here as this handoff goes to Bayama. The second effort tumbles down. It's going to be right at the stick. It's going to be close. It looks like he's giving it to him. Yeah, by half a yard, coach. A first down. He hands it off, just keeps driving his legs, keeps going, 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 and barely gets it right there. Good job. First first, third down completion, huh? Mm -hmm. One of six now after going 0 for 5 in the first half. Play five of the drive here. Follow Mayava, 12 carries, 65 yards. And two scores. And here is another handoff, straight up the middle. All right, you're a defensive guy. This is essentially a battle of attrition here if you're Punahou. What impact do these slow, methodical drives have on the defense? It takes its toll, you know. This is what we're talking about, the battle of wills. You know, you just got to keep banging and banging on them until you impose your will on the opponent. Um, i like to see maybe a play-action pass or something big right here coming up. You know, they're setting it up for it right now. After the gain of four, there's Salval stepping up, wanted a launch, but from behind, he's going to gain a yard out of it. Trent Shiraki, terrific tackle. Trent Shiraki, again, we just talked about coming off the edge, beats the running back, and makes a play. Here you see Salval at the fake, steps up in the pocket. Shiraki, he, he, he does a great job of getting around the edge and making the play and finishing it off. And they'll try to get him in it. Duke Heffernan at the top. Mason Paolo, the receiver, at the bottom. Draw it up, Alo Mayava. Cuts to the outside for that initial trip in the backfield by Maris Liufau. And then finished off by Dylan Lumberg. Bring up fourth down, and Puno will have to punt. Over on Spectrum X-Cast. Yeesh. Wow. up 35. Dylan Gabriel, huh? Dylan Gabriel is about 2,000 yards away heading into this season from the uh, state's all-time record. As this punt from Erickson will take Alakai Gilman back deep inside the 10, and Gilman is brought down right there. We're I mean, talking about Dylan Gabriel, right? I mean, Army commit and uh, his senior season. Son of Dylan Ga Garrett Gabriel, yeah. great player in his own right at UH. I really like that kid, Dylan Gary. I think he's got a lot of heart. He Maybe best quarterback in the state. Definitely, yeah. you know. I like what uh, Rod York is doing over there in Milano. All tied at 21 here. And uh, the first offensive second half drive for Hugh Brady after going 19 of 31 for 239. And two touchdowns in the first half. Terrell stretched out and goodbye. Mickey Ayu and Nalu Emerson help combine on the tackle. Those two guys have been such great mainstays and leaders on the defensive side these last few years. Here we go, hands it off. Terrell. Got a whole party back there. Three, four, five guys making the tackle, swarming. A loss of four and a penalty marker's down. I think these guys got to understand what the offensive line is trying to do. They're trying to do that little flex where they flex real quick, get up, get down, force them to, to get off sides. Dead ball. Encroachment. 99. Defense. Five yard penalty. Long remains. Two. By my unofficial count, I believe that's seven encroachments. There they go again. Almost got them again. And off here for Terrell. He gets tackled here. And he's going to gain a couple here. We're going to third down in about seven. Zion Ayu had a sack in the first half. One of five for the team for Kahuku. He makes a stop. I think Doug Violetti's got him doing that flex back in his day. You know, one of the old-time old linemen. I used to look up to at Kahuku back in the day. 
Seven of 11 on third downs for the Buffalo. The throw is out and it is incomplete towards Tomatoa Falatea. We had six catches in 72 yards, pretty much all of them in the uh, first quarter, essentially, as Nohi Kaniha was guarding him. Good coverage by Kaniha on the play. And Tim Horn is ready to boot this one away. He's going to have to stand in his own end zone for this one. You know they're going to bring the heat again. Tim Horn, Hawaii Kai kid. It was actually a quarterback of the JV team when he started off his football career at Punahou. Swings into it. Good hang time on this one so that Pu Robinson can get down there. And Kaniho will see it stop at the 46-yard line. 41 on the punt. All tied at 21 here in Kohuku. Bringing family together at Zippy's takes me back to my first time as a kid. Dad had his go-to order, mom had hers. Yet, I never could figure out what I wanted. It took a little while, but after coming back again and again, I finally figured out what makes me happiest. Zippy's very own garlic miso chicken is backed by popular demand, but only for a limited time. Enjoy every mouth-watering bite when you make your next stop Zippy's. Friday, the Red Raiders venture out west for a battle with the Sea Riders in desperate search of a win. Kohuku, Wai'anae, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. And Mike's Engraving and Trophies is the official trophy provider of Spectrum OC 16 Sports for all your special achievements. It's Mike's Engraving and Trophies, located behind Cutter Ford in IA. Good starting position here for Kahuku. It's at midfield on their own 46. It's a keep here. Oh man, how did he get out of that? For all, <laughs> for some, uh, he gave him the fake. He just kind of sat on it. Like everybody played played out, and he just took it up the middle. His presence in the pocket has gotten a lot better over these uh, last few weeks. Going back to the scrimmage rate. Here you go. You got the guy sawing off the edge right there. He just, he, he just fills that guy and just pulls it and keeps it with a smart move by him, not causing a turnover. Gain of two, second and eight. Give here to Monofonoma on a volleyball. Who's going to throw it downfield for Heffernan. Incomplete. He overthrew him by about three yards. I like the play. I like the play. Just a little bit more and he would have had it. Kanalu Pu'u Robinson was just behind Heffernan. Yeah, the receiver kind of like slowed down the slow. He just he just should have kept and hit it hard, and he probably would have scored. He said three yards, actually more by like five yards on that overthrow. And a chance there. And now it's third down and eight coming up. You see the two guys, offensive minded, with a Sterling Carvalho and Lemma Atuaya. Play action. Salval fires middle, Erickson, middle of the field. Alpine Erickson, all the way, just shot of the goal line. Oh, he almost had it. <laughs> Down at the one. I felt like I was running in slow motion over there. We have Kalana McCullough, who was uh, guarding on the big tackle in the backfield. We have another man down for Punahou on the near sideline. Nice fake, good catch. I just wish he would have finished it right there. Yeah, just in the middle of the field, Erickson and Makala save the touchdown. Alpine Erickson all on his way to BYU. Level of concern now here is on Dylan Lundberg, the linebacker. And the athletic trainers tending to him. It's good to see that he's all right, but what a play there from uh, Ethan Erickson. 
He looks like he's starting to cramp right there. You know, it's getting time in that game where, you know, those electrolytes are running out. Erickson only had 51 yards all season receiving last year. That pass was for 51 yards to set up first and goal. He and was it's wide a open. And a centipede formation here for Kahuku. They break out of it. Alomayaba. Snap. Diving in for the Kahuku touchdown. And Kahuku leads for the first time tonight. There's that big package again. They try to dress it up and make it look pretty. No centipede here. Designed all the way, and when they overload that side, that left side, it's easy pickings here for Alo Mayava to get in. Nice block, though, by a toilet left foul to, 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 to push that thing wide open. Hefford in, slides that one through. A big third down converted there by Robbie Salva in this Kahuku offense. Hooking up with Alpine Erickson for 51 yards. And then it's another rushing touchdown for Wes Alomayava. The hat trick of touchdowns tonight. Putting on a show, an experience, there's a lot of moving parts. We actually had 300 associates working for us on one day. It gets crazy. How do you get the HR support with Simplicity HR? You take a team like that who know what they're doing, that's why you partner. How could we put on the best if we're not working with the best? So that's why we work with Simplicity HR. Give us a call at 791-4900 or visit us at simplicityhr.com. Big Fries took everything from me to keep my father from exposing the truth about nacho fries. Rebellion is forming. Flip the switch. Is there anything that tastes better than this? Revenge. The future is nacho fries. Looks like you guys can use a hand. Aloha, join us this week as we follow Hawaii skin divers whose good deed sets them up for a magical day of diving. Coming up on the next episode of Hawaii Skin Diver, Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. exclusively on Spectrum OC16. All right, Coach, break us down the, uh, the, the formation here. You know, it's, it's something, you know, put a little... Put a little dressing on it, you know, make it look a little fun. But at the end of the day, I'm old school, man. Just line up and punch this thing in the end zone, you know. And when you have all those guys overloading that right side, you mentioned LaFell with the lead block out in front. Yeah, you see it right here. Great job opening that hole, man. Puno trailing for the first time tonight. A tornado kick that ends up towards Terrell. He's got time to pick it up. KJ Makatiak was first in on contact to try and squeeze through in the Google defense. On special teams, they able to stop him in a big shot there. Yeah, he pick, he picks up the ball here a little late, trying to be pretty with it, and and Makatia kind of runs through like three, four guys before he finally wraps up and makes a tackle. Impressive. Kamalika Halepuna helping in on the back end of that as well. Puno has. 239 yards through the air, just nine yards rushing the ball here. And there's that uh, penalty flag for another encroachment. Dead ball, encroachment. 43 defense, five yard penalty. Down remains one. It's on a Tosili Fiatoa. Oh, a little uh, baby hop there. <laughs> right? Leapfrog almost. First and five. Uh, right guard looked like he moved just a little bit as Terrell pounds it up the middle. Four first down. Nalu Emerson on the stop. Yeah, it looks like Moyai got away with a false start right there on that on that play right there. Right side of your screen here. Yep, oh. see it? Got it. it was a false start. It's pretty much everyone but the center. Yep. Hands it off. Good job by Terrell. And Terrell gets sideswiped here all the way to the ground by Kanafanomoana Vamu. He's the brother of Manafanomoana Vamu. He was really the MVP of uh, the defensive side when he played JV just a couple of seasons ago and his growth and his progress 
as a junior this year has been spectacular. No gain, second and 10 for Brady in the buff and blue. The throw is out. That's what made him their money. Kanoa Kalahiki, who's back in after getting it banged up a bit after scoring his touchdown. Mana Fono Moana Vamu knocks him out. Gain of about 14. I feel like they're trying to set up Kauka again, you know, mm -hmm. with the small dink and dunk, and all of a sudden they're going to take a shot here again. The interesting matchup is at the bottom of your screen here, as you see Nohi Kaniho going up against Tomatoa Falatea. Kaniho will play off of him. Brady looked that side and checked the other way. Up the middle and swarmed. Brought down by Kenai Leua. Second year varsity man. Another great basketball athlete. One of the highest of motors here in this uh, Google defense. Leua getting on the board tonight, huh? What a sack. The sixth sack tonight here for Kahuku. Second and 13. Everybody coming. Brady got rid of it quick. It is broken up. Intended for Kalahiki and Mana Funamoana Vaumu does a great job to swat that one away. Great job by Mana by breaking that up again. Nice to see you right there. Mana played a uh, yeah, big boys league growing up. You know, Mana was uh, uh, the running back and his brother, Kana, was the, the fullback. Back. So, you know, you got two guys who, who you could put them switch and put them on offense. Third down, Brady over the top, incomplete. Manafuno Moana Vamu funneled Kanoa Kalahiki to the sidelines. And it's punting time here for Punaho with 4.23 remaining here in the third. This is the opportunity that uh, Stern and Carvalho wanted to get up and then shorten the game even more. They still got to convert those third downs, though. That's true, they, right? They, they need to convert those third downs. If they can do that, they'll be in good shape. They can run that clock out. They're two of three in this quarter in third down conversions. Tim Horn's punt, and he goes down. A flag is out. It was all or nothing there for Kana Fonomo who made contact on Tim Horn. Now it's fourth and 13 here. If it's running, it'll be fourth and eight. If it's roughing, it's a first down. Yeah, he lays out for it, but you know, sometimes you put on that good show as a punter, and that's what you want to do to get to draw the foul. If I'm Tim Horn, I'm doing exactly what he did there. It definitely. Right? <laughs> if it turns out to be a positive for Puno, that's a great job from Tim Horn. Running into the kickoff. Five yard penalty. Down remains four. All right, so it'll be fourth and eight coming up. Remember, it wasn't the planned leg that he hit, and it wasn't an excessive hit by Kana Funomoana Vamu. Funo fans wanted a roughing, but I mean, by that replay, it looked like the right call. Definitely. Got to be smart here, though. Can't have yeah. that again, you know. A good call by Marshall Harvest, seeing that the entire way. So Horn back onto the field. It's fourth and eight. We haven't seen too much uh, gadget stuff tonight from the Buff and Blue. Flag is down. Are they lined up correctly? I don't think they are. I'm sure what this one's about. Snapping fraction. Oh, he moved Offense. the ball. Five-yard penalty. Down remains four. That's what it was. Again, once they spot that ball, you can move it and tilt it forward, but that you can reposition it, which was the case there. So the penalties essentially negate each other. And on the yardage wise, it's muffed and hopped on by Kohoku. Heffernan was out there and Nohi Kaniho is going to get a plate lunch from Duke Heffernan when this is all said and done. Oh, definitely. That could have been horrendous right there. Here you go. I think it goes right through his hands right here. Oh, bounces off. No, he can do a good job jumping on that ball right there. Hooker will have it here on their own 26. With 4.06 remaining, man. 
Canelo had a number of back injuries all throughout the summer, but he finally got to full health just last week. Robbie Saval tonight. Fairly accurate. Six of nine. Buck 55. Wes Alomayava. Wes, like so many other Cuckoo players, when you're a kid, you watch Cuckoo football, and for him, it was guys like Afonga Wiley. His power and his vision is something that he tries to model his game after. So it's a pretty good guy to look up to if uh, you're with Salo Mayava. You can go back to Alema's brother, Marky, man. Marky yep. set the records here yep. at Kahuku, too. So. Mark Ottawa has photos really all over the locker room. Toile Lefau, brother of Pesta Lefau, came through this program. Won a state championship. Mm -hmm. I played with his dad. <laughs> Towards to his dad? Yeah. No kidding. It's just, it amazes me, you know. Alos, Mayavas, Lefaus, Atawayas. It's, like you hear, you hear a name and it's just so synonymous with the program and it's just a forest of names. As uh, off the edge there was C.T. Veni Kalfusi trying to sneak in. It's going to be a first down here for Kahuku. It's almost like we're all related, you know. Defense. It's not like you're related. You guys are related. <laughs> Somehow we're all related. I got a lot of nephews on the yeah. team. <laughs> In fact, Kahuku.org has a great shirt that they made. Uh, it, it says, uh, That's my nephew. And it, it's all in all caps and exclamation points. And Anytime one of their nephews does a good play. That's what you hear a lot here in uh, Carlton E. Weimer Field is the carry gets to West Alomayava yet again. Trent Shiraki in on the tackle, who has his sixth tackle tonight. Too shy of the team leader, Maris Liufau. Good block on the left side there by Dumahi and, and Bryce Beatty with Lefau leading the way. You really feel the energy going to be brought down here on the or on the uh, Puno side. I kind of feel like it's down on both sides, really. No, you're right. You know, it's like a bend don't break attitude. Everybody's kind of on their, their seats just waiting. It's fairly humid out here, too. I haven't had a lot of breezes in the last 45 minutes. Going to breeze through that gap, though. Was Liv Fowl. Kennedy Freeman being on the tackle here. It's Freeman's fifth tackle tonight. And third down coming up. It is a battle of attrition if you're a defense here. Going up against Kuku's O. Kuku who trailed throughout the entire first half. Had their lead earlier in the quarter. Hand off, Alomayava busted one right side. Yanked down, Alakai Gilman. I really like that play. Hand it off to your big horse and let him go get it. Man. Good job up front by the big fellow, Mao Lumbar. Remember Inoki Vimahi also uh, one of the gems of this recruiting class is another big run. Here for Zeeland Matangi this time, a 5'9 sophomore. 77 rushing yards last week against Konolina. Trent Shiraki tags him on the tackle. As you see, they're starting to wear them down. Second and five. This is play seven of the drive. And a handoff there to Alomayava. Gain of a yard inside of a minute. You know, in uh, Game Day Hawaii, presented by Aqua Aston uh, Hospitality, that kicked us off. You know, a uh, good friend of KHON2, Rob DeMello. You know, did that survey of alumni. Four guys, two on each side. All the Puno guys picked the Puno guys. All the Kuku guys picked the Kuku guys. And right now, if you're a Kuku fan, you're cheering right now. As they should, right? You got to pick the home team. Mm -hmm. What they used to call it, school spirit, personal pride. Yep. Play action, third down. Pressure off the edge. A duck up in the air. It is juggled and incomplete. Down the field. Paniao Lindsay, transfer from Kamehameha, Hawaii was against Kainalu Pu'u Robinson. The pressure came from Kahanu Kia, the sophomore. So Val takes the snap, fakes it. 
A little slow getting it out there. Kind of leave it hung up right there. Good job by Robinson. Fourth down. Kahuku going to go for it, it seems. They only need two. Going to try and hard count it, maybe. Five of three, five. Matungi's the back. Oh, they're going to snap it here. Matungi runs forward. Stop initially. And depending on forward progress, I think he has it. Yeah, Wino fans are cheering, thinking that it will stop, but it's when forward progress is stopped and a rule by the official is where they will mark it. There you go, hands it off. Big gaping hole up in the middle. Look at that. Good push upside, inside Ooh. three guys. Beatty, Mao, and Lombard. That, that, that looked right at the stick. I think they might have... Oh, gosh. That's tough. That'll take us to the end of the quarter. Wow. Chance for everyone to catch their breath. Three quarters in the books. West Alomayaba, the go-ahead touchdown. Kuku with the lead, 28-21. You're watching the OI ILH Alliance on Spectrum OC 16. Friday Night Lights in Second City as the Buff and Blue come to town to get a much-needed win. Kapolei's youthful offense faces a tough test. Punahou, Kapolei, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. In next week's episode of Ultimate Japan, we'll be visiting the magnificent Matsumoto Castle. And then we're going to a wasabi farm to learn about wasabi and eat some delicious wasabi dishes. Ukiyo-e Museum ni ikimasu. Ironna shurui no utsukushii ukiyo-e o mitekita yo. And finally eat some Nagoya coaching famous chicken in Nagoya. So remember, follow me so you can experience Japan like you never. Don't be fudge. Coming up next week on Hawaii Goes Fishing, Walt Okuma grew up going fishing and he's teaching us what his parents taught him. Margo gets a quick lesson on how to fillet a striped marlin from a professional fish cutter. And a group of anglers give a friend a great first time experience during a half day charter out of Kona. All this and more on Hawaii Goes Fishing, Sunday at 5 and all next week. Big shout out to our friends at AE Equipment Rentals. They're proud to support high school athletics as Hawaii's premier supplier of aerial lift equipment and forklifts. Check them out. It's AE Equipment Rentals. In the third quarter, Kohuku dominated time of possession and total offense. Had the ball for nearly nine minutes in the frame. Had 122 total yards on 20 plays. Kohuku only ran nine plays for 21 yards. Talk about shortening the game, that's the very definition of it right there. I think you just want to continue and run these next 12 minutes and run it out as much as you can. First and 10, the fourth begins from the 31 for West Salomayaba's carry, Trent Shiraki, who is going to be phenomenal this season. I mean, it's his time. I mean, he's one of the more underrated linebackers and lifts the stars on this defense. And you talk about a uh, guy with a, a buff and blue collar work ethic. Yeah, Shiraki having a good game here tonight. Shiraki with nine tackles here tonight, six of them solo, and officials time because they recognize Shiraki's uh, in pain. I think he's just cramping up. You know, he's, he's been putting in a lot of good work tonight. So the athletic trainers will tend to him. Give him some more Gatorade, man. Pickle juice. <laughs> uh, that'll always work. Yeah. I remember when we were in the league, that's what they were trying to give everybody at one time. It was like the, the thing oh, to gosh. do. Did you do it? I tried it. No? They had all kind of remedies you could try. <laughs> <laughs> so Trent Shiraki, amazing work tonight with his nine tackles and tackle for loss. He's been a workhorse for those guys up front. So instead of their one of their senior leaders in the linebacking core, they'll bring the young sophomore DJ Utu, 44, in the white to replace him. After Alomayava's gain of two, it's a play-action rollout for Salval, who tried to check it down. And it's for the foul. Incomplete. How about Mani Noa Tufono? That's another name I feel like we haven't called a lot here tonight. But he comes forward and makes a stop and applies the pressure. 
Yeah, the Cougar offensive line has been doing a good job of beating him up tonight, you know. Uh, Tawaya there. So that kid. We try to simplify for him. And once he gets into a rhythm, he can become very, very good. And going from a the last six days of preparation for tonight, made some gigantic strides as Wes Alomayava trying to make some strides of his own between the tackles. A couple yards shy of the first down. Approaching the century mark here in rush yards tonight. They look like they're going to go for it. Fourth down and three. Field goal would be from 41, but that's out of the range of Duke Heffernan. I like the call here. It's an auto call. Left foul, the fullback. A timeout taken by the Buff and Blue. Koku converted their last fourth down by inches. Trying to go two for two here in the second half with Big Red up seven. Nobody likes a mess. Hey, control your mess. Where am I? Mess control only at Hawaii Self Storage. 5x5x3 units starting at just $19.99 a month. I'm back. <laughs> While other burger places serve the same old stuff, I'm the only one who has the bowls to serve something different. I mean, just look at my teriyaki bowls. Choose from steak or chicken, covered in teriyaki sauce, plus your choice of white or brown rice. What about these bowls, Jack? Hey, you got some pretty nice bowls there, and so does Dan. Thanks, Jack. Those are some nice bowls. Everyone's gonna wanna get their hands on Jack's bowls. Try my bowls! See that right there? You can't say that. What? I was just saying I've got great bowls. Oh, now I hear it, yeah. Try my teriyaki bowls, only a Jack in the Box. Dodgers, Lakers, the World Surf League, the University of Hawaii, and the very best in high school sports and local programs. The Spectrum Networks in Hawaii. We've got you covered. Hawaii Self Storage is accepting nominations for its Elite Student Athlete Award. Qualified athletes will have an opportunity to be awarded a $4,000 scholarship. You can go to hawaiiselfstorage.com for more info. During the break on fourth down, a play action shot down the middle for Toilette Foul ended up incomplete. We have a man down here, and it's Alakaya Gilman for the Buffin Blue, and so the athletic trainers are tending to him. It'll be a turnover, it'll be Puno's possession with 10.40 to go. I think we're getting to that point where the game, man, just guys are crapping up, human night out here. Him and Lefauer there, and oh, and that right ankle just rolled that right foot. Yeah, not good. Alakai Gilman, such a key player for this for this pulling the whole buff and blue. Of course, you know his brother Alohi Gilman that came to his program, right? You know, Navy and Notre Dame. His dad, Asai Gilman, <laughs> has a great uh, Adidas pylon team that. Just consistently uh, successful out there. I saw a side today, and I was telling him and reminding him about uh, when I was in fifth grade going to explorations. He was my dorm advisor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I made him feel old." I don't know how old he is, but he looks great. I'm not even lying. He's an 87 Kamehameha graduate. Okay. Oh, you're okay. Before you said Kamehameha, <laughs> before you said Kamehameha graduate, I was just like, "He's 87." <laughs> and uh, you see that Gilman is up. You know, one of the things that the OIA coaches, you know, kind of talks amongst each other when this OIA alliance, ILH alliance was uh, made was just the amount of physicality that the ILH teams will have to get used to week after week after week. You know, some of the holes in the schedule, in the old scheduling format, would have some teams having double buys and then playing only maybe two, three different teams. Now, with the exception of that last week in August, which is essentially a universal bye week, it is smash mouth, in your face football, week after week after week. About 17 weeks till we crown a state champion in November. 
It's been quiet here for Puno's offense. Only ran nine plays so far in the half. Play 10 is a Torrell run. Isn't Torrell's great? Alan Talanoa, the 5'11 sophomore linebacker, able to make the stop. Gain of 10. Torrell with a good burst up the hole. Great quickness. Torrell 10 carries, 47 yards. We know just 30 rushing yards tonight, trying to go for more. Torrell meets Tuia Tupuola. Good guy off the edge. Remember, his responsibilities are higher now because with Samson Reed gone, Samson Kapulisi Ilata gone as well. Tuia Tupuola offers from Utah State, UH, in Idaho. Yeah, Tupelo is such a long, lanky type of athlete. He's one of those guys as offense linemen are hard to block with, with such great length. And he's a nightmare in practice against even his own guys. He's, for got, he's got good speed and good burst off the ball. Flag down. They try to have Kahuku bite. This one's going to be moved back five because of Trent Nomura. False start. Fire to the snap. False start. Offense. 7-0. Five yard penalty, down remains two. I'm not a big fan of that little flex before you get down your stand. Seems to be working tonight, but they almost got them. That's the first yeah. one they got him, but they almost got him with a second one with the right tackle. Almost had one earlier. Nine penalties, 44 yards here. For the Buffalo Blue at 9.47 to go. Brady going up top, downfield. Terrell off his fingertips. Just couldn't bring it in. Nice route by Terrell with a nice wheel route. He, he, he beats his man and, and he places on him and almost makes the play right there. Elijah Latu was that assignment. i like to see him to go back to that again to Terrell. Mm -hmm. Third down and 17. Four-man rush, Brady with a pocket, and he is brought down. Another sack. Zion Ayu and Talsili Fiatoa combined. Talsia Fiatoa, wow. It's the fake, comes off the edge, good long arm, pushes the tackle back and makes the play. Great job. <laughs> This is a complete turnaround for Kahuku from the first half to the second half. You know, defensively, they switched it up now. They're playing with a four-man rush. They're dropping guys back. They're not as aggressive, but it's working into their favor right now. Horn gets it away from the 35, Nohi Kaniho, chased by Pu'u Robinson. Kaniho slipped away. The jersey was pulled. Kaniho down the sideline and out of bounds. What a great play. <laughs> That's a Kahuku kid, ladies and gentlemen. And Justin Jr. Poo Robinson's been great on special teams all night. But it's number seven, Nohi Kaneo, taking it 32 on the return to put Kahuku in pretty good position when you come back. Bringing family together at Zippy's takes me back to my first time as a kid. Dad had his go-to order, mom had hers. Yet, I never could figure out what I wanted. It took a little while, but after coming back again and again, I finally figured out what makes me happiest. Zippy's very own garlic miso chicken is backed by popular demand, but only for a limited time. Enjoy every mouth-watering bite when you make your next stop Zippy's. 2018 Women's Volleyball Season tickets are on sale now. Be there as your Rainbow Wahine battle for another Big West Conference Championship and a deep run into the NCAA Tournament under head coach Robin Santos. The Rainbow Wahine home schedule includes Gonzaga, Kansas State, Oregon, San Diego State, and UCLA. Get your season tickets now by going to HawaiiAthletics.com. Call 944-2697 or stop by the Stan Sheriff Center box office. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. See you at the arena. Aloha, join us this week as we follow Hawaii skin divers whose good deed sets them up for a magical day of diving. Coming up on the next episode of Hawaii Skin Diver, Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. exclusively on Spectrum OC16. The big board coming up next week. We are in Wa'anae for one of the uh, oldest rivalries 
in the OI, Kuku and White. It's been dominated by the Red Raiders. Kuku in St. Louis, September 7th at Aloha Stadium. Mark that down. Our entire schedule on OC16.tv. First and 10 from the Puno, 33. It's a handoff here for Tole Lefau. He uh, moved to Hawaii from Utah in the first grade. And since then, he has been uh, doing big things in this Kuku area. It looked like the center Mao is hurt on the play right here. And you're right, Coach. Trice and Mao. At uh, 5'10", 255 pounds. Looks like Kobe Alpuck is coming in for him. Oh, looking at that right ankle here. Tristan Mao has some uh, ankle injuries early in the offseason, so hopefully he's all right here. You know, Kaluku practices, sometimes they go so hard. Right, physical physicality, day after day after day. They bang each other up even before game day. So sometimes even the coaches have to say ease up. But the, pe the people who are, you know, worthy enough to wear the red jerseys, have a lot of play with a lot of pride. And they want to say have some statements in practice each and every day. I had some good battles here where he just banged the hell out of people. That's one of the best things about. Uh, let's see who's got the ball there. All right. <laughs> There are two different games going on, by the way, in the back of each end zone. It's a pretty good gig, right? Just lay out the mat, sit in the end zone, watch. Kobe Puck is the uh, new center. We'll snap it. Salval hangs this one up. This one is brought in by Mason Polo. Breaking free. Banged out of bounds inside the five. Polo looked like he went dead to rights. But he went off of Jaron Sato and freed him down for a gain of 25. Talked to the coaches earlier. Uh, Paulo is one of their big favorite targets out here. Very raw athlete. A lot of Makaula, who's the last line of defense, who pushed him out of bounds. And here comes that centipede formation here, coach. A lot of eye candy. <laughs> last time it ended up in a touchdown. They're overloading the left side. Alomayava follows middle this time and squeezes in for the Kohuku touchdown, his fourth score tonight. A hey, great job by the backup center, man. He didn't miss a beat, got the ball up, and uh, that left side of the offensive line just moved that, that pile right there. You got big Micah Soleai Howland out there moving people. Micah, a transfer from Kamehameha Kapalama. Only a junior, big addition to this, to this offensive line. And Duke Heffernan, who's been perfect tonight, stays that way to make it a 35-21 Kohuku lead. Wasalo Mayava from having his playing career potentially ended last season in a scrimmage to scoring four touchdowns here tonight. An incredible performance from a guy who has 22 rushes for 98 yards. It's a great job. He'll probably, before his night's over, he'll be a 100-yard rusher. And some uneasiness in the first half, you can imagine, from Sterling Carvalho after his team gave up an opening drive touchdown. But since then, Puno has gone really cold here. Yeah, they haven't been able to get much going offensively. In this second half, they only have 27 yards of total offense for the Buffin Blue. I like to see them take some shots, you know. The local 48 straight at home. Haven't lost a game at home in 11 seasons. Staring on the barrel of another win. But Puno's got the tempo and the offense to do some damage, but they'll have to start it at the 20 yard line. There are some big hits right there on that kickoff. Mm -hmm. Guys starting to feel it there. They're trying to feel the energy drawn off the crowd. So, Hugh Brady tonight. Pretty good numbers 252 through the air, two touchdowns, 20 of 36 passing. What kind of stuff do you want to see from him to give himself some confidence? Probably get. 
first of all, you got to protect. You know, yeah, Kaluku seems to be getting them now to the second half, making some adjustments up front. Um, you know, back to the quick game, like I said, and 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 I like to see him going back to number 19, their running back. I think he, I think if you can hit him again on that wheel route or get him swinging out, I think I think he can, he got some big plays in him to make. I see Vincent Terrell, 11 rushes, 45 yards tonight. You mentioned that protection. That offensive line has given up seven Kahuku sacks tonight. This one past Terrell and into the arms of Tomatua Falatea. I'll get Tomatua Falatea going. He's caught seven balls here tonight. That's going to be a gain of about eight. Second down and two. Man, Brady, handoff here. And that one is immediately stopped. Zion Ayu grabbed him around the waist first. And right at the line to gain. So it should be a first down with 7.23 remaining down 14. Zion looks like he's hurt. Maybe his shoe just came off. That guy's one tough cookie, man. He's not the biggest guy, but he holds his ground in there. Very athletic. It's going to be a lot of ice bats tonight when this is said and done. First down. Brady, high throw for Falatea, incomplete. Mohi Conejo stalking him the entire way. Mohi Conejo doing a great job beating him up out there. A lot of connections between these two programs. And throughout the years, both schools enrollment affected by you know, the students that either transfer to each other. A lot of familiarity. Brady hit as he's thrown. It's incomplete. Just shy of Kanoa Kalahiki. They've been all over him tonight. They've been doing a lot better in the second half, getting to the ball. I think Talsili Fiatola applied some heat here. Yeah, he's just pushing the, 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 the offensive tackle back. These guys are starting to get there. They're starting to work their moves. Kuno's 0 for 3 on third downs in this half after going 7 of 11 in the first half. Pressure from behind, he sacked. The ball came out, but we rule him down as Kana Fonomo on Avamu gets the sack. Yeah, Avamu right there. He just beats him right off the edge. I don't know if he even touches him. He's so wise. He dips his shoulder, bends the corner, wraps him up. Luckily for that quick whistle, or else he might be picking that thing up. Eight sacks tonight. Who had 10 against Campbell last year in a loss stadium in the OI semifinals. This is eight sacks against a pretty good Puno offense, but an offensive line that's been tested. Horn deep kick. Out of bounds. And Duke Heffernan able to kind of down it out there. Well, so much we talk about, Coach, about the the defense, and it's taking its time to kind of congeal and do well. But the guy in the backfield in West Olomayava, spectacular tonight with four touchdowns. Definitely. He's a workhorse right there. Um, obviously, he's getting some great blocking up front by his offensive line and his fullback. They foul, man. Unbelievable job up front. You played here before, obviously. What's that competition like when you played as far as running backs? and defense trying to shut down the offense. How intense is that? It's, it's intense because, you know, you, you don't do too much talking. You do it with your pads, you know. You just come off the ball, and, and especially when you start imposing your will on people, mm -hmm. you know, guys know it. So Val works sideline. This one is caught by Duke Heffernan. Duke Heffernan. His father, the great Tommy Heffernan. We'll see uh, play time at Kahuku and then at St. Louis. He is one of 34 grandchildren from Tommy Heffernan Sr. Tommy Heffernan Sr., by the way, is the fourth oldest of 13. He has 11 kids of his own, and he has 34 grandkids. That's a big family, boy. Yeah. It's a busy man. He's out. Maris Liufau gets the tackle. I really like that player right there, Liufau, again, putting in some work. Boy. That guy's a big workhorse, putting in some work. Trying to push that pile and create a gap for Alomayava to shoot through.
Holding. Number 75 offense. Danielle's from the spot on the foul. Down remains two. It's the 14th penalty here tonight on Kahuku. And it's going to take him over the century mark in penalty yards. Watching that foul right here. Capture the edge for him. Runs his feet. Player doesn't even know. Too bad for his holding call. 14 penalties, 111 yards here. It's a lot of up downs. <laughs> For Sterling Carvalho, too. Yeah. Yeah. Stop there from Hiram DeFree Soronovan. Right on West Alomayaba. Of course, Kahuku, who won the OI Championship last year. And one of the best games you're ever going to see, by the way, against Mililani, who, by the way, is up. 57-15 in the fourth. Kahuku going to try to make a strong run and not just in OIA, but another possible HHSAA crown. Keep here, Salvao. Tons of space. Robbie Salvao. Salvao lost the football. And Puno got it. Picked up by Kawana Makala. Kainalu Puno Robinson. Pumps the ball out. What did we talk about earlier, Felipe? About putting that ball away. You're right. What a job here. Here we go, Seval. Great move right there. We talked about it earlier. Running with the ball out loose. Comes from behind, gets the ball out. Good recovery. A clean one inbounds, and maybe that's the play here in the final five minutes. They can try and get Puno one more chance. <laughs> we going, right? That first 50-yard you know, run that he had. He ran that one for 45 yards. Wow. Someone's got 112 rushing yards tonight. Alo Mayaba with 101 of his own. And 454 total yards of offense here for Kahuku. Kuhnohal with just 28 total yards here in this second half. Brady. Works it short. Here's Moku Dancil Evans. Good job there from Moku to bring that one in. Alan Talanoa and Nohi Kanihu on the stop. Moku, no nonsense kind of player. See him in practice. Makes pretty good catches from his slot position. Nice job with the quick out there. And Kanihu after the quick wrap up. After the gain of seven, it's second and three. Brady, middle, caught. This is for Moku Dancil Evans again. Back to back catches. This is good for the first down. These defensive ends from Kosovo are, are steaming. They're just running through guys right now. We got a man down here for Punaho. Is that Brady? Terrell, I think. It's Terrell, yeah. Oh, man, Terrell's been so good tonight. He's been battling there, trying to block these big guys up front, man. I see a Leonard Lau on the right side. An assistant coach here for the Puno Buff and Blue. All of them, along with the trainers, attending to Terrell. Hello Hawaii, Tanari Ma'afala, President of Shopo. Together with our spouses and our children, we thank you Hawaii for the outpouring of your support and heartfelt aloha expressed through your letters, phone calls, and in-person regards. Rest assured Hawaii, inspired by your support and the true aloha spirit, we will continue to lay down our lives for you and your ohana and for our visitors from abroad. And as always, stay safe, live aloha, and God bless. Oh, this? This is just extreme, over-the-top, mind-blowing joy. And it's just par for the course at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. After all, it's the perfect place to get a great deal on the Honda Fit with a standard rear-view camera. Talking about incredible deals at the Honda Summer Spectacular event is almost as joyful as getting one. Yeah! Almost. 
It happens. Visit your local Honda dealer and test drive the Honda Fit, 2018's best subcompact car for the money. Friday Night Lights in Second City. As the Buff and Blue come to town to get a much-needed win, Couple A's youthful offense faces a tough test. Punahou, Couple A, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. Well, being helped off the field was Terrell, so he's out. And so Sitoveni Kaufusi will come in. Brother Andrew Kaufusi was a great player over at Kaiser. His cousin Ace Kaufusi, four in the red, is on the opposite side. Brady in the pocket, firing to the middle. It is intercepted by Mona Kuromona Bomber. And then the ball came out for Ace Kalfusi. They're going to rule him down first. A flag. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He tried to flip it to him, didn't he? Oh, now they're really incomplete here. Oh. They're really incomplete, so no pick as it's ruled. I think that might be the right call. Be Let's we'll see here. I'm not sure now. He go avoids the sack. Oh, they both got their hands on it. Oh, oh the ball hit the ground. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, good yeah. call. Yeah. So no clear possession there. That's a great job from the uh, back judge, Ron Takadena. <laughs> Second down, Brady up high for Falatea, incomplete. Brady's pass overthrown, intended for less Falatea. Depending on the number seven for was about to explode, had that pick uh, be taken, but Puno gets the reprieve. It looked like he tried to flip it, huh? To Kafusi? Mm -hmm. Four and a half to play. Puno down 14. Brady, 276 passing yards tonight. Hit as he's thrown. That one nearly picked off. Again, it's Monofono Monavamu on Koa Eldridge. But the pressure came from Alan Talanoa, 14 in the red on Brady. Nice call by defensive coordinator Coach Soliai here, bringing the pressure up the middle. Nohi Kuniho and Duke Heffernan are back deep to return this. They essentially kind of run up the clock and send Kahuku fans home happy. Kuniho returned the last one 32 yards. Horn's been averaging. 35 a punt, and this one is fair caught right at the 30-yard line. 36 on the boot. A penalty marker down to the backfield. Coach, we've seen 23 combined flags tonight. <laughs> like I said earlier, there's a lot of laundry on the field. Good man. Lord. 14 for Kahuku for 111 yards. Nine for 44 yards for the Buff and Blue. Google coaches are on the field asking for an explanation on uh, what this penalty is about. And Marshall Harvest for the and that fair catch signal. Oh. On the receiving team, five yard penalty. First down. So one of the point of emphasis, leave it was last year. You have to make a clear signal. If you're going to fair catch it. This is basically a straight hand waving over the head. Zina Matangi is the running back. Noah Uluabe in for the first time. 34 in the red as a fullback. The ball skipped out. Oh, and that could have been Puno's opportunity. Who's got it? Puno. Oh, they do. And picked up by legend Matamtia. Life here for the Buff and Blue. Definitely. This is like the worst thing that can happen, turning over the ball. Puno was loading up the box and forces his fumble. Doesn't get the handoff here. Falls straight in his hands. Wow. Big, big turnover. Let's see if Puno can convert now. This is the deepest penetration here in the half for the Buff and Blue. Just outside the red zone. Brady. It is Dancil Evans. 
incomplete. Brady took a shot right here by IU, Zion. Four minutes to go. Wino needs to score here. Brady. Oh, nearly picked off. Jump in was Conejo. Falatea, the intended target. Conejo had five interceptions last season. He looked like he was running to the house already. Here he goes, drops back, throws it. Good break by Conejo right there. Well, if you're putting 03, does you no good. You got to go for six. McCullough in at receiver. Up top towards McCullough. Picked off Peter John Matira. Matira on the run back. Trying to get a block. A flag is down here. Matira. First interception of the season. Quarterback feeling the pressure. They bring in uh, pressure up the middle again. Throws it. Gets one picked off. This fly came after the change of possession. Here we go. Brady looking down the field. Throws it. Nice. Picks it off. Does a great job of returning. Somebody's got to tackle and bring this guy down. He gets a good return right here. I'm surprised he took it out of the end zone. Yeah, he's just making making plays, you know. Matara, wow, good job. So out of the discussion, Marshall Harvest will flip the switch. Doing the return, block in the back. Good hole. Number 18, 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. It was on Kalana Makala, who was the intended offensive target there. But Peter John Matara, who coach got burned really in that first quarter with his assignment on Tomatoa Falatea. It's a huge play for that young man. Oh, definitely a huge confidence booster. You know, they were attacking him early, being successful. And, and to make a play like that just, just makes everything better. All you need is one, you know, mm -hmm. especially as a defensive player. Now they put in a toilet foul back in. Look at the big boy run. Toilet foul. Tufano chasing. Toilet foul. Still going. La foul. Unbelievable. Touchdown, Kogu. The big fella bumbling and stumbling all the way down to the end zone. Unbelievable. Toilet foul. What a play. Sheer determination right there. Here we go. Hands it off to Toilet Foul. Makes a jump cut. Gets hit, one, two, three guys on the play right there. Oh, another cut back, moving back. Cuts across, back across the field. Secures the ball, good job of securing the ball. And with the finish, unbelievable. <laughs> 235 pounds of toilet and foul. Just took it 65 yards for the touchdown. And this one was hooking, left no good. It's the second miss extra points of the year here for Hefferton. Toilet <laughs> LaFowl only had 14 rushing yards last week against Kornawina. He has 111 rushing yards. He's one of three players that has rushed for more than 100 tonight here, Coach. Look at him. I'm just impressed with the moves this big fella has. He sees the guy making a good pursuit angle, cuts it back across the field, switches the ball in his hands. Keeps running, doesn't stop, and finishes the play. Unbelievable. I feel good for this guy, the big fella. You like seeing a guy like that get rewarded and score one, put it in the end zone. Give him all the water right now. <laughs> Definitely. Good job, too, by the guys up front, man. They're doing a good job tonight of moving that pile. He's been that kind of night, really that kind of half, really, for Kahuku. 518 total yards of offense. 281 of them in the second half. That's pretty good for your first, you know, you got a new offensive coordinator. And what a great job Alema Atuai is doing out there for Kuku Red Raiders. 
Quinnahal, after having 250 total yards in the first half, only has 44 here in quarters three and four. Tomahawk chop out in full force here tonight. Man, you talk about a momentum swing right after another, right? The fumble, Punahou recovers, the interception, and then the run, and this muff that is picked up here and taken, uh, I think oh. right around the 30-yard line. A flag is out. We have two flags out now. We got to separate some bodies here. A little, a little unnecessary right there, late hit. And Alapu'u Robinson got the recovery. Right, these kind of games, right? All the build-up, all the hype. And how close it was played in the first two quarters. You know, they started the second half like with that bend on break trail. Like people we were just waiting for something to happen, something to burst. Yeah. You know, and like you said, right there, you know, those turnovers right there, you can feel the momentum switch. We got life back again. You know, they, they give it away, Punho gives it away, and you know, and then boom, Koku scores. How fast he can swing. And we had two flags toss. I think one's on Nalu Emerson. Marshall Harvest has to sort this one out. Punahou has 10 penalties for 54 yards. Kuku's got 15 penalties for a buck 16. During the play, first one foul. Number six. Kauku, 15 yard penalty, first down. So he says number six, which is a Peter John Matira. Let's see here. This one was a. Dead ball foul, personal foul, number eight. Oh, there yeah. you go. Kauku, 15 right yard there. penalty, first down. So it's a 30 yard penalty. Very unnecessary after yeah. the whistle. <laughs> Been pretty good about that tonight, except for right there. Officials, for the most part, have done a great job here tonight. Really great job all weekend in the OA ILH Alliance games. We have a whistle here prior to that snap. And I think the reason why is because the chains weren't ready. And yeah, that first down chain was still getting tangled up and being maneuvered over to the line to gain, so. Not another chain situation, huh? Like last night's oh, game at no. Kapolea, come on, man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> They're working on the first down stick, right? <laughs> and coming across there is Tuia Tupuola. And they're going to send him out. Right to the snap. Encroachment, 99 defense. Five-yard penalty, down remains one. Zion Ayu hops off the bench. Puno has run 20 or 10 more plays. Oh God, and they got the guy who replaced the guy who originally owned. Zion Ayu got in there. Oh. Take him out, coach. <laughs> Dead ball fall. Matt Fonga is over there, defensive line coach for uh, Kohoku. He's out on the play, first down. Yeah, that's his department. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, my. Run it here for Terrell. Terrell's going to be really good uh, this season and next season, assuming he stays healthy. I mean, you, Robbie Toma built him up as his hard nosed runner. You see some of that coming through. I really like this player, Terrell, mm -hmm. man. So dynamic, you can do a lot of things with him. Hurry up! 2.45 remaining. Down 20. And Brady in the pocket, pumping and throwing incomplete for Tomatoa Falatea. No, he can he in on the coverage. I think Falatea might have heard footsteps on that one. These guys, these guys are kind of getting cranked up and getting a little, you know, Nachi out there where mm -hmm. they're just, you know, looking to hit somebody hard right now. Punahou has to go to Kapolei 
next Friday. Kahuku has to take the two-hour bus ride to Waianae. How about Kenai, Liua, and Kana Moana Vamu? I like their adjustment with putting Kanai, uh, Fuena Moana, uh, Vamu on the outside here. It's been, it's been a, a big help in the second half, making a lot of plays off the edge. Kuku rode a whole lot of momentum tonight in this second half to not only take the lead, but get up 20. Brady throws. This one is caught here for Moku Dancil Evans. That'll be good for the first down. Now Emerson tagged him on the tackle inside of two minutes. Brady tonight, 24 of 49, 283 yards now with the two touches and the pick. First down from the 18. Some fans getting a little uneasy saying, hey, let's go, let's keep it going. Brady throws right, oh, with a firework tossed up. That one is for Koa Eldridge. Mickey Ayu looks like he tried to uh, pick that thing right there. Yeah. Little fireworks, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's 22 to go. Brady hands off Terrell. Terrell plowing through to the end zone for the Buffin Blue touchdown. What's crazy is he hits this thing right down the middle, and this guy's off the edge just missing by that much. If anybody deserves it, it's that man. He's put a lot of work in tonight. I like this guy, Terrell, man. He, he, he did a lot of good things in the passing game and, and blocking guys. Average seven and a half yards per rush last season. Right here, slide and dive right down the middle, right behind the center. Good job. Squeezes through those edge rushers and puts it in for six. Tim Horn, three of three tonight. Four of four tonight. Well, it's an uphill climb with 73 seconds to go. You're definitely going to need an onside kick. Here, remember the new rules regarding onside kicks at the high school level. Can't do that squib and have that ball kick up on a second hop. So you essentially have to pooch it or beam it at somebody. That's the only other option. So you can't kind of top spin it and then have it. I'll go with the beam. Okay, <laughs> that might be the best way to do it. The schedule doesn't get uh, any easier for each of these two teams because they are obviously in the open division with the. Uh, Couple and Farrington coming up here for the Buffalo Blue. Both of them on the road. Google again, as we mentioned, has to go to Y and I. But everybody on Spectrum OC 16, you are going to want to watch that one against St. Louis after the 69 to six victory over Y and I last night. And then the Warriors come to town on September the 14th here up north. And then the Milan Trojans, a rematch of last year's OIA championship. Here, I have our full schedule on Spectrum OC 16. Next five brought to you by Hawaii Honda Dealers. You gotta love these matchups coming up. St. Louis after last night, boy, very impressive. Coach Cowley and his entire staff up there. What positive can you take away here if you're Puno? I think they have a, a lot of things to hang their hat on tonight. I was very impressed offensively what they did. I think they had a, you know, a good plan. They they just didn't adjust to Kahuku's uh, thing. I still think I still feel they could have went more to the to the back out the backfield. Maybe even I even feel like they could have went empty with all these great receivers they had, and they might create more problems where you can't double team everybody and, and throw the quick game out of empty. Mason Paulo is back deep to return this kick. However. They're loading up on the front, so the hand steam is essentially out. They're trying to recover what we assume to be an onside kick attempt. And Horn, one uh, kind of kicked up there for LeFau. Brought that one in, LeFau, someone lost a shoe in the process. I don't know if I would have beamed it at that guy though. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a pretty good night right. tonight. Here you go, Horn kicks the ball, pops up. Good job of catching it right here, making some moves again. Look at that, gives him the fake. Mm -hmm. and finally, they, they try to get him down, the big fella.
You mentioned this is the 16th meeting between these two since 1950. Out of the six Kahuku wins, this is the second highest point total in this head-to-head -head series. They scored 42 against Punahou in the Division I State Championship game in 2012. That same year was actually the last time Punahou played at Kahuku. Yikes. That was a rough handoff, but LaFalle said, give me the ball anyway. And good job there from legend Matatia to come forward. They'll kill the clock after a timeout was taken here by the Buffin Blue. You see Lemma Tawai, the offensive coordinator in the background, steering Carvalho. What do you think of Lemma's hair, by the way? I'd shave it off. <laughs> <laughs> I got a raise. I can shave it off for him after this. I'll give him one of my specials. <laughs> Who just has a way of riding momentum, as we mentioned, and string together big plays. I mean, on all their touchdown drives, really aided by big plays. Duke Heffernan's big catch, Alpine Erickson setting him up, the big punt block and recovery in the end zone. And you talk about crowd atmosphere and getting that momentum going. Although it, this isn't the best Kahuku crowd in terms of uh, decibel levels, it's been fairly quiet on both sides, but... When Kahuku feels the energy surrounding them, as you mentioned earlier in the game, and that's something that they can kind of roll with as the game goes on. I think they feed off the energy, and I don't think they felt it tonight. I don't think they came out. There wasn't too much. I think everybody's at home watching on TV tonight, but right. I don't think the Tomahawk job was in full effect tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, one, and, and that works conversely, right? Because if the Kuku offense doesn't work r right or well enough, you know, the fans are going to be chill a little bit. Is that handoff goes to foul. With 51.3 uh, remaining, Puno takes another timeout. Try and stop the clock here. And we have a uh, Puno whole man down. The final timeout of the half. Uh, that's not something you want to see, obviously, uh, at any point during the game. More importantly, towards the end of a game, Yeah, you, you know, that, that's the one thing, you know, in any game you play, you know, every, every time you, you just, you know, at the beginning of every game, I think you pray for everybody to be safe and get mm -hmm. out of here safe and go home safe to their families at the end of the day. You know, this is a tough game played by tough people. Dylan Lundberg, it's good to see he's walking under his own strength. Worst injury you've had as a player? I ripped my quad off the bone. That's right, yeah. It felt like I got shot with a shotgun. Yeah. I ain't gonna cry. I cried like a baby. I ain't even gonna lie. It hurt. But that's a career ender, right? I there. know exactly. That's why I teed you up for that. Yep. And the athletic trainers have had a busy night, which is not good, as we mentioned. Kaliane in his 20th season with the program. Another NFL great. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Kalei looks amazing, by the way, for 65 years old. He looks young. He's amazing. Yeah. Third down. And 11. LaFowle's left side run. Chased out there. Maris Liufal, one of the guys out. With a Tevaroa Tafiti aiding with a 46.1 remaining. The thing I didn't like about that play is he went out of bounds, you know. It's kind of like last year in the, you know, in the state championship. Yep. You know, th these are the kind of situations where, you know, hey, run to the to the open side of the field and, and you know, kill the clock. So there's a starting Carvalho's uh, brother in the uh, in the front there with the cuckoo hat. I'm calling him Handsome Carvalho. That's what he told me. That's what we call him when I first met him in June. Amazing guys. Both of them similar personalities. And... Kawhi boys, huh? Yeah. Fourth down here. Erickson just got that one away. And this one skipped over Allen Talanoa's head. And so, we will have it at the 20-yard line. Of course, we'd, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention... Uh, Pele Leotao, who's a, a notable coach here in this uh, community, especially in the JV staff. And uh, Google was dedicated this season to Coach Pele. And uh, actually, his funeral was today. And uh, just an emotional procession. And, um, you know, it, it hits hard, this community, right? And anytime anything happens to anybody in this community, yeah. Everyone in Kahuku knows about it. Coach Coach Pele was a special guy, man. He's been around here for generations, you know. Mm -hmm. For I I can remember being here in elementary. I remember he was coaching, you know, whether it was on the Vars or the JV, 
you know, he just gave his unconditional love to, to the, the Red Raider Nation, and he will just be sorely missed. Right, of course, we send our best wishes to the family out there as Ace Kalfusi wraps up Moku Dancil Evans. Moku Dancil Evans, nine catches, 72 yards. And there you see, oh, they're out in droves here tonight. There's uh, Tomato Falatea. Brings that one in with 12.7 remaining. Good for the first down. Tonight we have seen 857 combined total yards of offense. And it's Kohoku who has 520 of them. On 15 fewer plays. And the final couple of plays here for Brady and the Buffalo Blue offense. As Brady fires high, Nalu Emerson gets the interception. He had six last year. He has one tonight. And Nalu Emerson runs to the sideline. And Solator Moyai. That's all she wrote right there. Chased him out. That does it. How fitting. A game-ending interception. After the defensive stand in the second half from Kahuku, which was awesome. And it's Nalu Emerson to send Kahuku out with a win. 41-28 the final. Kohuku able to win it. Their fifth win over the Buffalo in the last six head-to-head -head meetings. The Red Raiders on display tonight. They're able to win it by 13. Cheesy Bites Pizza Season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip, pop icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out pizzas the hut. The business is tough. So many people want a piece of you. When we were down, First Hawaiian Bank helped to get us back up. We are friends. Friends, friends. And now we're starting a foundation. And if I can teach them uh, younger artists and further their career, then I think that's what I should do. We are friends, everybody's friends. Friends, friends. This Friday, the Red Raiders venture out west for a battle with the Sea Riders in desperate search of a win. Kahuku, Waianae, Hawaii Prep Football, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum OC 16, 100% original, 100% local. Do you worry about going to the dentist? Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call the number on your screen and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month and everyone in your household can use the same card. Call the number on the screen. Representatives are standing by to assist you. Attention blood thinner users. Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If your loved one took Xeralto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-811-0279. Again, that's 1-800-811-0279. Well, Kahuku wins one for the OIA in the open division of the OIA ILH Alliance. Able to score 20 points in that second half to win it by 13, 41 to 28. Kahuku gets to 2-0 on the season and a signature win, the first signature victory for that man, Sterling Carvalho, here as the head coach of the varsity Kahuku Red Raiders. So Chris Naoli, Felipe Alhastro, Jimmy Bender's on the way in just a second. What else can you say about how Kohuku played, particularly in that second half? It was good. I told you, it was coming down the wheel of wheels, and um, I think Kahuku imposed that wheel in the running game. You know, I'm very impressed with Robbie Salval as, as a quarterback and how he handled the whole team tonight and controlled the whole offense. Uh, Toilele Fao, the big fella blocking, rumbling, scoring, <laughs> scoring six, yeah. and, and obviously the, the other guy running back, Wes Alo Maya Alva. What a great job he's done tonight. And those three guys that you mentioned, each of them rushed for more than 100 yards, but one of them only had four touchdowns. That man is Wes Alomayava. He has those four scores and this one interview with Jimmy. 
Hey, thanks a lot, Felipe and Chris. And here we go, Wes Alomayava. Big game for you tonight. A little over 100 yards. The four TDs, the main thing. And coach had told me before the game he thought you were the one guy who could fill up the stat sheet because of the fact that you fit right into Kahuku's scheme offensively. Talk about that and how you were able to pull it off tonight. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my line. They're the true players of the game. I'd like to What's give up, it line? to them. I'd like to give it to them. <laughs> Um, just, <laughs> just going in with that right mindset and knowing that this is a long line of tradition between Koku and Puno and just it was a great honor to play against them. And I know you're an offensive guy, you know, the defensive guys, you like to boil them during practice, but talk about them tonight and what they did for you guys in that second half to secure the win. Really, the defense just shut them down. They didn't let them after the, in the second half, they just shut out. <laughs> I gave it to them. Right there's my old line. Yeah, Two players in the game. Guys, we're sending it back to you. It says a lot about the kid's character when he thanks the guys blocking in front of him. Wessel Omayava, 23 rushes, a buck one. Four touchdowns here. Four big ones. Momentum swinging touchdowns. It's impressive. That's two weeks with a 100-yard rusher, man. This guy, this guy's unbelievable. Like, but I like what he does. He gives credit to all the big fellas up front, as he should. You know, these guys are, it's a good old line, and they're just gonna pound them out. Got a good fullback, good tight end. Um, you know, the guys on the outside made some plays today too. You know, he's not the typical size of your usual Kahuku running backs, but man, this guy jump cuts so well. He's got great vision, he hits the holes hard. Listed at a six feet and a, a buck uh, 70 officially, but uh, he's a good, good guy to kind of hang your hat on if you're Kuku and find stability in the backfield. Definitely, he sees the holes, he hits it, uh, he can make moves, he can make he can make those cuts, and uh, you know he's just a good workhorse for you. And in his second year on the varsity team, much like the impact player for the Puno Buff and Blue, his name is Hugh Brady. You know, even though in the loss, these numbers are not too bad. No, I'm impressed with Hugh Brady. I think he did. I think they did a lot of good things on this. Uh, I give you know Robbie Toma a lot of credit on offense. You know, I think they came out, kind of solved the mystery early about Kahuku, and then in the second half just couldn't get it going. And that second half went eight of 22 for just 68 yards. But I think a lot of people kind of question, all right, how good was Hugh Brady going to be? He got pretty good support from the likes of Koa Eldridge and Tamatoa Falatea and Moku Danso Levins and Kanoa Kalihiki and Vincent Terrell. When he needed to make money throws, especially in those first few drives, he was on the money. He was on the money. They came out with a good game plan. They hit him with a quick pass, and then they, they went up over the top. And so rivalry. It is a 9-7, the advantage for Punahou uh, after uh, Kahuku wins their seventh head-to-head -head victory against uh, the Buff and Blue and wins one for the OIA on this night. Public school wins. Definitely. You know, they had to chalk one up after last night. But, uh, you know, I'm sure all the public school guys are happy. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just good seeing good on good competition. And I'm happy that the, the OIA and the ILH decided to make these decisions to let these guys play because, you know, you can't get any better matchups with this. And I'm sure we'll see these guys at the end of the season. How big of a win is this for uh, Sterling Carvalho? It's huge. You know, he's 2-0 and on his, in his record. Uh, I think it builds momentum. Uh, obviously, three weeks from now, the big matchup is, is what I think everybody's targeting. I know you can't never underlook, you know, why not Kapolei, but, uh, you know, after what we saw last night, it's pretty going to be pretty interesting. We saw the running attack here tonight from a three big players, Tuole Lefau, Wesolo Mayava, and Robbie Salva. One of those runs is our Taco Bell play of the game. Oh, yeah, it is the big red bull. Tuole Lefau, 235 pounds of him, taking it 65 yards for yeah, six. Yeah, he makes a nice jump cut. They makes the, he, he feels the pressure, the angle pursuit, cutting him off. He cuts back behind it, and he, and he puts it in for six. Longest rushing touchdown of his career, and probably the most memorable one in his uh, last couple of years at the varsity level. And you're running away from Mani Noa Tufono who's on his way to USC. And uh, Tuole Lefau. I mean, it was that kind of night here. I mean, remember, that was... After the big turnover and the interception from Peter John Matira, that momentum swing kept going, and Kahuku able to get the win here tonight. More to come on the postgame show from up north here at Carlton E. Weimer Field on a night where Kahuku wins it by 13. Growing up, football grabbed my heart. One day at practice, I planted wrong. I tried to walk, and I couldn't. I tore my labrum and my hip. As a former collegiate linebacker, I knew Jace's situation. We got him in for surgery soon after the season, and his recovery was excellent. I felt quick. I felt strong. I run the fastest 40 for a linebacker in that camp. The coach at UCLA called me. He's like, we have a spot for you on this team if you want to take it. I called Dr. Crawford. I told him we did it. We made it.
Really, putting on a show, an experience, there's a lot of moving parts. We actually had 300 associates working for us on one day. It gets crazy. How do you get the HR support with Simplicity HR? You take a team like that who know what they're doing, that's why you partner. How could we put on the best if we're not working with the best? So that's why we work with Simplicity HR. Give us a call at 791-4900 or visit us at simplicityhr.com. The 2018 football season tickets are on sale now. Be there for the return of the run and shoot under head coach Nick Rolovich. The Rainbow Warriors host a seven game home schedule that includes Navy, Rice, Duquesne, Wyoming, Nevada, Utah State, and UNLV. Get your season tickets now by going to HawaiiAthletics.com. Call 944 2697 or stop by the Stan Sheriff Center box office. Rainbow Warrior Football. Live Aloha. Play Warrior. You're watching Spectrum OC16, 100% original, 100% local. This is the post game show from Spectrum Networks. Post game show here at Carlton E. Weimer Field, Kohoku. Hometown Red Raiders able to win it 41 28 to get to 2 0 overall on the season. Remember, in the OIA ILH Alliance, this game does not count towards Kohoku's regular season record in the OIA, so they still remain 0 0, but Kohoku. Uh, able to get the win, and Punho starts their season off 0-1 with Coach Chris Nyolip, Felipe Ojastro, Jimmy Bender on the way in just a second. Defense is kind of stole the show in the first half, and even the second half, specifically for Kahuku, that front seven was outstanding. Oh, definitely. These guys these guys adjusted, and then, and then they made the plays that they needed to make. Eight different sacks here tonight, and even rushing the ball was pretty good here from a number of different guys, three of them. Getting over the century mark in rush yards. You know, option right there, which I thought was a good addition to their offense right there. And just straight pounding it up the middle, man. It always works. Especially when you got a big offensive line up front that can crush those double teams and get some movement up front. Lefau 113 rushing yards. Salvao 112. Alo Mayava with 101 rushing yards on a night where they had 520 yards of total offense. 333 of them on the ground. Jimmy, you got to the sideline and you got to see the entire game from that view. What stood out to you? Yeah, well, one of the things that stood out to me actually wasn't on the field. It was in the stands, and that's Punahou's crowd. The way they traveled tonight, the size of the crowd they had, the noise that they made, it was pretty impressive. I don't think I've seen anybody do it that well up here in Kahuku because it's a long ride for anybody. Mm -hmm. So to see them all here loud, proud, and having a good time, it was pretty awesome. And they had a lot to cheer about in those uh, first couple of quarters there, Coach, after Hugh Brady did a great job throwing the ball downfield and connecting. Yeah, they did, they did a lot of good things tonight uh, that I didn't expect, and uh, Hugh Brady was one of those guys. He, he, he controlled this offense to a T. And uh, did it from a variety of ways. Swung it out to the backfield. They worked a lot of short routes, but when they went long, they connected. You see that pass to Koa Eldridge, who today had five catches for 94 yards. It was a team high here for the Buffin Blue. For the likes of Terrell and Eldridge and Dan Evans. The pieces are there still for Puno, albeit starting off their season 0-1, to make a pretty good run in the ILH and maybe the open division. Yeah, I think they got a lot of good receivers that got on the board tonight, and, and I think I really like the, the running back, Terrell, like I said. I think there's a, there's a much bigger package. I think he's a dynamic dynamic back where they can do more things with him. And, and obviously they got some good guys up front. And, Jimmy, you're right. I mean, it's not an easy job for a parent or a friend or, or a relative to, to make the trip up north to watch a game like this and to, to to support a team like the Buff and Blue. It was pretty impressive tonight. Not only that, uh, you guys had mentioned some of the big names that were here in the crowd. A couple others I saw. Clark Little was here. Uh, his daughter plays uh, soccer for Punahou, so he was here cheering on the Buff and Blue. Mm -hmm. You guys mentioned Pal Eldridge. I also saw Boy Eldridge here in the stands, the Punahou softball coach. So a lot of big people showed up tonight to watch this one, guys. Yeah, and Boy Eldridge, his son Cole Eldridge, nicely done here tonight. And you heard his numbers earlier. As we continue on with the post-game show, here up north, Kahuku able to win it by 13, 41 to 28. Hang tight, more to come on Spectrum OC 16.
Bringing family together at Zippy's takes me back to my first time as a kid. Dad had his go-to order, mom had hers. Yet, I never could figure out what I wanted. It took a little while, but after coming back again and again, I finally figured out what makes me happiest. Zippy's very own garlic miso chicken is backed by popular demand, but only for a limited time. Enjoy every mouth-watering bite when you make your next stop, Zippy's. We are home. We work hard to put a smile on your face. As a member of Aloha Pacific Federal Credit Union, you get surprisingly low rates on loans. So you can buy that car or house, pay for major expenses, or consolidate debt. We treat your money like we treat you with Aloha. And you get expert advice for a better financial future. When you have Aloha, anything is possible. Visit a branch or alohapacific.com. Hi, Bud Shastine here. Remember when vinyl is final? Well, after three decades, it still is. Vinyl siding and windows are still the most affordable option for protecting your home. Stop by our complete showroom to look at all the possibilities to create a new look for your home. Remember, protect your investment because vinyl is final. Tropical, the oldest window and siding company in Hawaii. Vinyl is final. Vinyl. Welcome back to the Post Game Show from Spectrum Networks. Back with the Post Game Show here from Carlton E. Weimer Field up north on the North Shore. We're going to be uh, visiting this campus a whole lot all throughout the season. I have uh, Kuku on about five more times, about four of those matchups here at Carlton E. Weimer Field with uh, Chris Naolip, Felipe Ojastro. We talk about big time swings in a game no bigger than the special teams play. The block punt and the recovery in the end zone for the touchdown here. This is huge right here with Kofusi. And then you get uh, Makatia, right? Yep. Making the play, getting six, getting on the board right there. That was huge. That would end up tying the game at 21 all. They would go into the half 21 21. Kuku rode that momentum. The momentum swings here, Jimmy, were just crazy on both sides. Puno jumping out in front first, 7 0, kind of taking the crowd back. And then Kahuku doing what Kahuku does in that second half, dominating on their way to victory. Yeah, they ended up pounding the ball. It's been tough for Sterling Cavallo. You know, Felipe, you and I were talking to him before the game about nervous energy. You know, as a first-year coach, you're going to have that. And, and he said the way he channels nervous energy, he smiles more. So there must have been a lot of smiling going on on that Kahuku <laughs> sideline for the first half. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. I mean, well, well, especially though that first drive, I don't know if there was too much smiling there. But <laughs> as the game went on, uh, Sterling Carvalho, and, and, and we got to know Sterling Carvalho, you know, a great man that came through this program, through the JV ranks, and then finally earned the job as a head coaching spot. Uh, just a, a signature win for him. Yeah, he's, he's just an overall good guy, good educator, Kawhi boy, uh, Red Raider, right? Kawhi Red Raider. So yeah, yeah. just moving over to Kahuka Red Raiders. But uh, he's doing good things in the community and for his team. And, you know, it's a tough gig, you know. If you you got to keep winning because you saw the coach last year. He won every game but the championship game. Yeah. And he's not here. So there's high expectations out here at Kahuka. And the Kahuka fan base uh, spreads throughout, even on the neighbor island. Hoku Adudawa, who's a part of the Baldwin State Baseball Championship team, is watching the postgame show here. He's all happy that Kahuka <laughs> won as well. It just spans all corners of the island here. This is your first gig, by the way, in the in the broadcast cast booth how was it it was weird man it's like uh, being a rookie although you know <laughs> first time you know i don't know what to expect you know i got the call the other day from dave Vinton to come come join you guys in the booth and uh i'm glad you guys had me well we thank you for your time as always and you did a phenomenal job tonight we have more high school sports coming your way in our spectrum networks ohana of course next friday it'll be kahuku at wanai punaho we'll take on couple you can check that out on spectrum oc 16 and spectrum xcast St. Louis and Mililani, that's a major one on a uh, Saturday night over at John Cutting on a stadium. Camel and Wine Eye. Don't sleep on that one. That's going to be a very interesting one as well over on the west side. Tonight, it belonged to Kahuku, the home team. Able to win it 41 28 with Jimmy Bender, Chris Naiole, our producer Dave Vincent, our director Kevin Luke. Outstanding women, men of our Spectrum crew. Felipe Ojastro, support high school sports. So long 
from Kahuku. Growing up, football grabbed my heart. One day at practice, I planted wrong. I tried to walk and I couldn't. I tore my labrum and my hip. As a former collegiate linebacker, I knew Jace's situation. We got him in for surgery soon after the season and his recovery